Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. An elderly woman walked into the local country church. The friendly usher greeted her at the door and helped her up the flight of stairs. Where would you like to sit? He asked politely. The front row, please, she answered. You really don't want to do that, the usher said. The pastor is really boring. Do you happen to know who I am? The woman inquired. No, said the usher. I'm the pastor's mother, she replied indignantly. The usher said, Do you know who I am? No, she said. Good, he answered. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance on a Thursday. I'm telling you, I'm glad it's Thursday. Uh, thank you very much. God bless America. Nobody ever sings that better than Kate Smith. Welcome to Zeb at the Ranch, and I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, and along with some of our great advertisers, too, Lease Furniture, Floors, and more at 459 Overland and Burley, and, of course, Western Waste Services, always at your disposal. Get on the route service, get rid of your garbage. Call them at 734-6969. Uh, along with the lovely ladies in my life that helped put this program on, my lovely wife Deanne, and then also the inimitable and always trustworthy Gina Jameson. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Happy Thursday to you. You have no idea. Oh, yes. Yes, I do. At 1101, do not call, do not text, do not email, because I will not respond. <laughs> You never do anyway. I can't. I don't know. <laughs> but that's okay, you know, because, well, we live in the age of technology, and some are just not technologically apt. You are in the age of technology, but I'm still back in the Stone Age. I know. Fire. How do we make fire? Well, come on, Gore, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Oh, it's going to be a busy day, but this is going to be a lot of fun, and we have... Uh, Mr. Carl Clark on for the pledge, and Michael Rogers on for the weather. Oh, well, good deal. Carl, if you'd give us the pledge, please, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Zeb. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Carl. God bless America. Oh, I agree with you. Hey, we're going to be talking about Carl as a, uh, a Da Vinci, an artist, a Rembrandt, and a little bit this morning. He's putting on an art class. We'll tell him all about it later on, Carl. Okay. Hey, don't get your hopes up. Uh, I'm just teaching people to draw the very basic something that's recognizable. Yeah, but there's there then lies the problem. If you had me as a student, something that's recognizable. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. God bless you, man. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Hey, it's time for the weather, and we have the world's greatest weatherman on our program, and that's MichaelRogersWeather.com. Brought to you by Rock Creek Growers on the corner of Maxine Lane and Irene Streets in Kimberly. They've got a great big sale going on with their trees, shrubs, plant materials, everything. Oh, boy, hardscape, softscape. I'll tell you more about that later. So will Karen. God bless you, and have a good day. And here now is MichaelRogersWeather.com. Morning, everybody. Sunny, 80. Make that 71 for the high today. 45 with the overnight low. Gets warmer tomorrow and cooling off on Saturday with a slight chance of a thunderstorm. Great day to be in South Central Idaho in the fall. It's a nice, crisp, 
weather in the morning is nice and the air is dry and clear and you can see the leaves churning and the sun is out and the temperatures is pretty nice. Thank you very much. That's your weather. Enjoy. It's the only weather you got. Uh, Michael does a great job. The best weatherman in the universe. Rock Creek Growers, the sponsor of MichaelRogersWeather.com on the corner of Maxine Lane and Irene Streets in Kimberly. And we're going to be talking to the lovely Karen Anderson a little bit later on this morning. Hey, let's sell some cattle, shall we? All right, get set of steer calves. They're here to get all of 31 moment. I am 31 going out. I am 32, two, and I am That is the voice of, I think, one of the all time great auctioneers, and that's Merv May at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley, and he, along with Lance Udy and the rest of the crew, are going to be serving you at sale time, 1030 this morning, Burley Livestock Sale Yard. And for more information, call 678-9411. Here's just some of the run they're going to have today. Jay Cottle over at Malda. Hello. Oh, Jay, how you doing? Bringing in 115 head of ripping good calves. And Brett Anderson over at Hayburn, 17 head of 800-pound steers. Willis Ranch up at Albion, up in the north country, in the south, but up in the north country. 27 head of calves from the Willis Ranch. Good folks up there. And Chip and Kathy Molino over to Cary. Haven't seen them for a long time. 112 head of calves coming in. K-Bar N Ranch over at uh, Aberdeen. Hello, how's everybody up at Aberdeen this morning? 31 head of calves coming in to the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. Sale time, 1030. Hey, Merv, sell those steers, would you please? All right, get set of steer calves. They're here to get all of 31. Moment, I have 31. Going out, I have 32. Two, and I have three. Going out, I have 134. Four, and I have five. Going out, I have 135. And I have 135. 50, 135. And I have seven. Going out, 35. Is that mail? Get bottom again. I love it. Thank you very much. Calls are welcome at 436 2244 927 4587 how many of you folks in the audience uh, have not signed up for cow, po- cow pies? I almost said something completely different. It was a faux pas. How many have signed up for cow pies and coffee cups? Well, that's my blog, my weekly newsletter. Go to zebbell.com and uh, put your address in there and make sure that you get a copy because starting in October... And we're going to give you all this information next week. Starting in October, once a week, we're going to have a drawing for some really, really nice prizes, compliments of some of our great advertisers. And uh, you better get your name in there as appreciation to you following us on Cow Pies and Coffee Cups. Okay? Give us uh, your name, and you might be one of the lucky winners. Okay, take care of that. All right, give me a call, 436-224-1866-927-4587. I know my friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric are already there. Mm-hmm. They've had their group hugs, sung Kumbaya, and they've had their warm drinks to kind of settle down a chilly morning over there at Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. And don't forget... Salute to farmers. Hats off to farmers going on right now. They know you're in a hurry. They know you're in harvest. They know what you need. Cords, cord ends, fuses, everything that needs power, they've got it for you. And they know that you might need a new cap. Woo, that one you're wearing is kind of dirty, greasy, and smelly. Get rid of it. Throw it on the floor. Get a brand new one. they got popcorn and pop at Ramsey serving you as they have for over 57 years where they provide warm winters and cool summers. Ramsey Heating and Electric. You stop in and see them today. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. How are you doing this morning? I am fantabulous. How are you, Mr. Mass? I am doing great. I just kind of thought I'd like to remind everybody about uh, the POW program this weekend. Mm -hmm. Uh, Come out and enjoy it. Well, of course, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in my public service announcement segment this morning, I'm going to be telling everybody, but I'm glad you called in. The 6th Annual POW MIA Recognition Day will be at the square in the Rupert City Park Square this Saturday. And give us the times and what uh, some of the speakers, who they're going to be, etc. Okay, we've got the music, live music starts at 10 till uh, 1.30. Uh, we've got uh, Ken Mort. Dan uh, Hendricks and Art Smith will be uh, performing. And then on the program, we got Zeb Bell as a master of ceremonies. We have uh, John, Jimmy, and John Jonah uh, McEwen, McEwen singing on the Patriot program. Mm-hmm. Uh, Damien Rodriguez will be the speaker for the family of uh, Rudolph Lopez. He was a POW. Right. And Dr. American Legion will be doing the firing squad. 
uh, we'll leave the stream, we'll be doing the taps. And uh, I will tell everybody, according to what weather forecast we've heard from Michael and other uh, regional casts and everything, it looks like it's going to be a very nice day, and I urge everybody to be there and really pay tribute to the POW MIA 6th Annual Event right there at the Rupert Square. George, God bless you, man. Thanks. You betcha. Thank you. Sir. Have a good day, sir. Thanks. Uh, don't forget, too, Valleywide Home and Ranch. I tell you, those folks over at Valleywide are so doggone efficient and nice. I mean, just stop in there. You'll see what I mean. And uh, especially this time of the year, we're seeing the fall kind of rear its head right now and say, going to get chilly. As a matter of fact, in a couple of weeks, might get doggone cold. They've got all the Carhartt clothing, the vests and the jackets. There just isn't better coats and clothing than Carhartt. I love that stuff. And uh, they've got all the boots and they've got everything for your feed needs, for your livestock. They have an excellent, excellent tack department over there with everything for your old paint. I mean, your ropes and your bridles and your bits and your blankets and everything right there. It's excellent. And and great people to help you, too. At Valleywide Home and Ranch, 910 South Oneida in Rupert, you stop over and see them today. Uh, did you happen to catch the interview, a very exclusive interview from Fox News with Syrian President Assad? I watched excerpts of it, a lot of excerpts on it, and Assad came across as a dentist in a business suit. You know, we are doing this man, I think, way too many favors. I think we're, we're trying to set him up as a soft-spoken, very uh, concerned individual instead of really the dictator murderer that he is. And I listened to this, I listened to his questions, I listened to his answers, and you didn't have to be a uh, crack journalist to really see through the facade that he was putting up. And uh, Syria along with Iran, the money, the influence, they are playing our amateur administration through Obama like howdy doody. I, I hope you can see this, folks, but we are being played like a puppeteer with puppets. Putin and Assad and the Mideast in general are absolutely mocking and making fun of us. Because of our lack of backbone, our lack of being the superpower that we have uh, tried to portray over these many, many years. But this is ridiculous. We are absolutely being kowtowed by Iran and, of course, Syria, Putin, Russia, and Assad. And when you listen to Bob Gates and Leon Panetta yesterday... When they were asked about the red line and about whether or not Obama has had a tough stance in his administration, a tough stance to still maintain respect for America, they both said, they both said, it's lacking with this administration. And i got to give Leon Panetta a lot of credit. I really have to give him a lot of credit. When it was brought up about the red line statement that Obama made, he was adamant. He was adamant when he said, if we draw a red line and it's crossed, we damn sure better honor it. Those are his words. And we're not. We have basically like uh, pretending like this was back in 1836 at the Alamo when they drew a line in the sand with a sword. Well, they've stepped over that, that line in the sand. They've taken their boot heel and obliterated that line in the sand. And they've made other lines in the sand. And that's exactly what this administration has done. There was a red line crossed, and nothing was done as far as retribution. Oh, there were words. Oh, there were a lot of words from Obama and his staff. There were a lot of words and faux pas from John Kerry and also Biden. But really, ask yourself this question. Are we a country to be respected right now? Are we the country that we used to be? Are we the country of speak softly but carry a big stick and use it when you must? Ask yourself that question. Or are we the laughing stock of the world? Whether it's the pudgy little pillberry doughboy over in North Korea, Kim Jong Un, or whether it's this insidious murderer, Assad, or whether it's Putin, 
It doesn't make any difference. All the world leaders, are we really respected around the world thanks to, or no thanks to, the Obama administration? A bunch of amateurs, amateurs, that do not belong in the positions they hold. Let me know what your thoughts are. I really want to hear this. 436-224-1866-927-4587. I want to say while I'm waiting for your call that I know is coming in, Thanks to Rain for Rent for being on our program. 134 South, 600 West, Highway 27 in Paul with Rain Key. Yes, sir, re Bobby. The great Rain Key Ray Bates. Re <laughs> I caught myself. I knew I was going to do that. The great Rain Key rebates for fall. Check on the Rain Key Pivot Sales and Service for your farm, your operation. They know irrigation, and they've got some of the greatest professionals over there. Frank Jensen, Skip Hilton, Brooks West, all of them right there to serve you. You call Rain for Rent today. 134 South, 600 West. Highway 27 in Paul or stop into that address. Give a jingle, 438-5065. And they, of course, have all the Rain Key Pivot Sales and Service. All right, let's get on the phone line right now, 436-224-1866-927-4587. By the way, the state of Michigan... The state of Michigan and their Senate deserves kudos this morning because they are adopting things that we have said on this program for the last couple of years. I've been very adamant about this. I just stated my case on this the other day. Their Senate in Michigan has passed a regulation that says if you are on welfare, you will prove that you're not also on drugs. Whoa. You will pass a drug test to get the assistance. You will follow our rules if you're going to stay on state aid. You will pass these tests. You will give us the information. I think this is a lead on Michigan. Go, Michigan! And more states should adopt that policy. You're going to stay on state aid. You're going to accept all the welfare payments. You're going to accept what people that are hardworking are supplying through their taxes. You will follow the rules. You will take a drug test. And you will adhere to what we tell you. Absolutely a double amen for that. As a matter of fact, that's worth a hallelujah from our studios. Two of them, as a matter of fact. I almost caught you, didn't I? <laughs> oh, Gina's good. I appreciate it. Calls welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Give me a call. Um, one subject I'd like to talk about this morning, and I'm really, really concerned about this, is, uh, and I want to say thank you to Leland Snyder. Leland sent me a bunch of information, and I've had many others. Uh, Randy Givens down in Texas has been keeping me informed as what's happening in the state of Texas, the Lone Star State, with a major problem that's going on now, like a cancer, across our country, and it's the Middle East religions coming into our schools. Now, if this is an indoctrination, I don't know what is. And you should be very, very cautious, careful, and concerned about what's happening. Uh, we heard about the Tennessee story where uh, a young lady came home and said, Hey, wait a minute. I don't want to go on a field trip to a mosque. I don't want to be led in prayer sitting on a prayer rug. I don't want to look to the east and issue any prayers for Islam. I am a Christian, and I value my religion, and I don't want to be forced and coerced into doing this. I will not go on a field trip. Well, when she decided not to go on that field trip, guess what happened? The school really cracked down on this girl. And they said, then you will write a theme, and it has to be so many pages, about Islam. And they gave her the books that were in the school and used in the school. Five pages of this one book had all the merits and greatness about Islam. One page was given to Christianity. And she said, no, I will not do that. I will not sit there and absolutely be a hypocrite and give you anything about an Eastern religion that I don't believe in, don't want to be a part of, and I will not do it. And her dad stood up for her. God bless him. And he went to the school and he said, no, she's not going to do it. And I'm going to come after you if you force her to do anything, and you will take the zero off her grade. They did. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. 
Well, good for him. I'll tell you another thing in the last 50 years. Our trade, we had no trade deficit 50, uh, 50 years ago, Zeb. Can you imagine? We just we had in free trade with all, all the regulations and so forth, long before NAFTA and so forth. But now we have a trade imbalance of almost $500 billion, half a trillion dollars per year. And, you know, uh, uh, NAFTA has been a total disaster. The free trade agreement with uh, Korea was uh, so one-sided. If you... if we allow a million Kias in here or, or more, and they would allow us 75,000 American cars to possibly come in. But if you happen to be a South Korean citizen, one of them, Cadillac Escalade or Lincoln Continental, I'll tell you what, you get an IRS equivalent of an IRS audit if you buy that vehicle in Korea. Yeah. So yeah. You, I can imagine, I mean, everybody protects themselves. We let everybody in here. Now we got Smithfield Foods being purchased by a Chinese company, which we, you know, that's totally ridiculous. Well, I mean, Adrian, Adrian, just a second. I, I really appreciate you bringing this up, but you got to have some uh, empathy for what I'm trying to do. I was talking about Middle Eastern religions, and I will not get off track on this right now. I will. You know, on that, on that subject alone, what you're just saying there, yeah, we've become so politically correct, and we've got, I don't know, I sent you an email yesterday about this situation where... The Muslim women are going in and buying cell phones up, which they use for detonators, and uh, sending them over to, uh, the, you know, over to Afghanistan and so forth. Well, my point is here this morning, and I've got to take a call from Jim McCall in just a minute. My point is here this morning that in a not so subtle, not so slow, not so uh, hidden indoctrination program it's becoming bigger all the time in all of our schools even in the elementary grades to accept believe and be a part of eastern religions and i'm putting my fist down on the table listen for it and i demand that if they're going to bring eastern religions in the schools then they also bring the bible back and christianity i am not going to abide by insidious relationships with these eastern religions taking over our schools well, yeah, our Supreme Court ruled we were a Christian nation until the Warren Court, 62-63, took prayer and Bible reading out of school, and it's been a downhill morality uh, decline ever since because uh, we used to be able to have a prayer and a Bible reading in school, and we did it on Absolutely. a regular basis. Absolutely. I've got I to gotta take a break here. i got to take a break here and get Jim McCall on, but, Adrian, I appreciate your comments, and I do need you to call me after the program. I need to talk to you about next week. Give me a call. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay, Thank you. Day. Bye. I believe that we have a great guy on the phone right now, the head of Tribal Loop Supply at 1050 West, 203 South of Hayburn, and that's Jim McCall. Good morning, Jim. Hey, Zeb. How are you today? Well, I'm worked up, uh, and I know you, as a Christian, are very, very concerned about what's going on in our schools with the indoctrination process to accept Islam and other Middle Eastern religions. Uh, but let's not talk about that right now. I want to talk about everything over at Travel Loop Supply. I understand if you buy a grease gun, you're going to get the free tube of grease. Is that right? You bet. Actually, it's a, a whole case if you buy one of the electric ones. We oh, man. Uh, 12 and 14 volt cordless. Uh, we even have a, a 110 powered electric grease gun. I've got one in my shop, and boy, that works really good. How far can you shoot that grease? <laughs> it just depends. No, seriously, how far can you shoot that grease? We ought to have a grease gun fight. I think we should do that as kind of an advertisement for these great grease guns. <laughs> yeah. Grease guns at 10 paces, is that... Yeah, there you go. That's a great idea. But I'm on crutches, and so you got to give me the advantage of turning around before you wipe me out with all that grease, all right? Oh, maybe. <laughs> what else have you got over there at Travel Loop Supply? Hey, Zeb, I know nobody else does, who has accidents like I do, but we we broke the... We're in the big cable that runs our beef digger, and that's... Uh, several strand wire and to the parts house they are really expensive but we got a roll of that wire in and uh, if you've got trouble with your spud digger or your beat digger come on over and we've got that 
uh, mold the strand cable to fix them back up. All right, and then you also have a product that if anybody gets stuck at harvest, they can get unstuck. And what is it? And I want you to say it correctly. <laughs> you know, we still have leather ropes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Bubba ropes. You mean you got bubba ropes? Have you really got a lot of supply of bubba ropes? We've got a few in. So <laughs> if we don't have the one you need, we can get it in just a few days. And, uh... Come check them out. All right, Jim. God bless you, man, and have a better day harvesting today. Jim McCall, one of my truly great friends at Travel Loop Supply, 438-8730. And he has, he said, has Bubba Ropes. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> God bless. Hey, it's time. Boy, it's way past time. i got to hurry. Time for the Pacific Steel and Recycling Ag Minute at 320 West Main in Burley, 678-2321. Here's the Ag Minute for today. Today's Ag Minute brought to you by the Capital Press, the West Ag Weekly. Potato industry members who attend the National Potato Conference's annual expo in Texas this winter can expect to hear detailed analysis of agricultural trends and economic forecasts from the event speakers, including pop culture icon Ben Stein. Stein, the keynote speaker at the expo, scheduled for January 8th through the 10th in San Antonio, is an actor and author and has served as an economist for the U.S. Department of Commerce and wrote speeches for Presidents Nixon and Ford. The Expo will also expand a series of networking receptions for young professionals, women in the potato industry, Potato Industry Leadership Institute Annual Reception, and the Potato Political Action Committee. With the Capitol Press Ag Minute, this is Hannah Brough. For more agriculture news and information, turn to the West Ag Weekly, the Capital Press, and CapitalPress.com. Do you remember Ben Stein in the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off? He was the monotone teacher that stood up there and said, Bueller, Bueller, where's Bueller, Bueller? I know he actually wrote speeches for some of our presidents. Uh, ben Stein is one of the sharpest economists in the United States of oh. America. Yeah, uh, He is definitely a very, very, very smart man, but that was a little factoid that I had no idea. Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. where's Bueller? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he will always be known for. No Pacific Steel and Recycling, 320 West Main and Burley. They're not looking for it, Bueller. Bueller. They're looking for all your recycling needs. And Pacific Steel and Recycling is 100% employee owned for 25 years. And they remind you that National Recycling Day will be November 15th. I better stay off the air that day. <laughs> anyway, stay tuned for lots of specials and free prizes and giveaways at our friends Pacific Steel and Recycling, 320 West Main in Burley. Come on, give us a call, 436 224 as parents out there in the audience, are you concerned? As parents out there in the audience, what would you do, seriously, if your child, son or daughter, came home and said, um, gee, mom and dad, I've been forced to go on a field trip that I don't really want to go on. Um, I'm very happy with the religion that you and I and the rest of the family have. Uh, they're coercing us and forcing us to learn about Eastern religions, and they're forcing us and coercing us to learn more about uh, being a Muslim. What would you do? What would you do? And I think right now people need to take a stand. Right now people need to stand up and say no. Uh, I'm going to be writing about this story in uh, my blog that will come out tomorrow, as a matter of fact, in Cow Pies and Coffee Cups. And I think that uh, it's absolutely uh, being brought into the schools to overshadow, diminish, and destroy Christianity. That's my own personal opinion, and I'm going to stand by it. Once I make an opinion, I will not weaken. Calls are welcome, and uh, doggone, where are you? 436 227 4587 Give me a jingle on the landline, and I would love to talk about any subject you want to talk about here this morning. Um, I, I'm really upset about one other issue this morning. And uh, where is the outrage from Obama? Where is the outrage from our State Department? Where is the outrage from Congress, our senators, our House of Representatives? Where is the outrage from America? To It's almost been a year. 
almost been a year since Pastor Saeed Abedini has been thrown into a vermin-infested prison for doing nothing more than building and working on an orphanage he was building with government approval over in Iran. Where's the outrage? You know, we get up every day and we enjoy our warm beverage in the morning to get things started, and we enjoy our breakfast, we enjoy our time with our family, we enjoy getting the kids off to school, we enjoy a peck on the cheek from our spouse, and off to work we go to have another day, hi-ho, hi-ho. And at the same time, here is a United States citizen, a father of two, that lives in Boise, Idaho, and nobody cares. Nobody's really doing anything about it. Oh, we'll get lip service from some of the politicians. Oh, we're doing all we can. We're going through the proper channels. Why, we're making inroads here, and we're trying to get right to the top and demand, demand that he be... Re oh, give me a break. All that is garbage. Where is the outrage? Where is President Obama? Where is Obama? This is an American citizen that was doing nothing more than trying to help people in his home country of Iran. His parents still live there, etc. He was trying to build an orphanage. And again, I want to revert back to with government approval. But for some reason, Iran thought, well, we'll show the United States of America, we'll just arrest this pastor and throw him in a vermin-infested, crime-ridden prison that is one of the worst anywhere in the world, and sentence him to eight years, which he'll probably never see the entirety of eight years. He will probably die in that prison. He's been beaten many, many times. His health is on a shoestring. And I would just absolutely change my whole opinion on this administration and especially on Barack Hussein Obama if he showed any courage to stand up for an American citizen. It, does his life not mean anything? Does his capture by Iran not mean anything? That the President of the United States can't address him and say, we're going to do all we can on behalf of the Oval Office to get this man released. You haven't heard a word. And with each passing day that this man is in prison, according to Jordan Seculo, with the executive directorship of the Americans for uh, Law and Justice, his condition becomes more grave, and he probably will not get out of that prison alive. I was uh, one of the very, very few in the United States that had his wife, Nagme, on my program. You'll probably remember that. And he has a seven-year-old daughter and a five-year-old son that every day get up in the morning and cry because dad's not home. And every night they go to bed and cry because daddy's not there to tuck them in. And does anybody really care? Do you care? Have you done anything? Have you called Crapo? Have you called Rich? Have you called Simpson, Labrador, etc.? And demanded, yes, demanded, not asked, that they do something, get back to you immediately, and let you know what they have done, if anything. Have you done that? How would you feel? How would you feel if you were Saeed Abedini? And you're a devout Christian that absolutely wants to help people in the world, build an orphanage for the betterment of these children's lives, and you're taken captive and thrown in jail way away from home, and you might not live to see the sentence carried out, and you know that your country is not doing anything to get you out. How would you feel? Give me a call, please. This is a subject that you should not remain quiet on. You should let your voices be heard. 
And I believe wholeheartedly that we need to really shake the timbers. We need to really grab the politicians by their neckties and get their attention and say, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Get something done. Good morning. You're on the air. Well, for instance, um, if Mr. I got this letter in the mail or this card, this big huge card for Mr. Simpson. And, uh, you know, if he truly cared about anything, he could have made this an issue on national TV, and he, he could have done something. Have you heard him say anything about it, Randy? What? Have you heard him say at any time, any time, anything about this pastor? No, he hasn't done nothing, and I don't. I'm trying to integrate these two subjects, and I'm. Uh, when I got this letter from Mr. Simpson, all I could think was that you two-bit phony. Easy. That you Easy. all you can think about is the fact that you might not get reelected, and you could not care less about the people of this country or this state or Mr. Abedini. He could make a name for himself just stating a case about Mr. Abedini. But you see, these people are so far removed from reality. They need to spend a month milking cows or on the harvester or something. They need to spend a month selling advertisements for the Zeb Bell program. Oh, please, I don't know if I want them working for me. Please, Randy, don't put me into that kind of an outrageous situation. I don't think I want them as an employee. Please, Randy, no, no! <laughs> My son, who is very informed, and he's 22, he says, what's this? And he's seen this flyer from Simpson. And he says, where's this guy been? Now that he's afraid that Mr. Brian Smith may beat him, he's scrambling to save his job. Well, here's, here's the thing, though, Randy. The country here, here. and the economy and, and stopping Obamacare. What about... When it was when it was implementing, why didn't they make a statement back then when they were passing this thing by shoving it down our throats? Well, I just can't understand, and and I've had many programs and segments on these programs devoted to uh, Pastor Saeed Abedini and why he's not being released. I've I've devote you've heard his wife on my program. I've had the lawyers on my program. I'm the only one that's had him on here, and I'm outraged. I really am outraged that more people aren't getting. Concern, more people aren't uh, waving their fist in the air, and I'm really concerned why they haven't, at certain meetings with some of our politicians, raised their hand and said, uh, by the way, what are you doing to get this pastor released that is a Boise, Idaho resident, a United States citizen, father of two, lovely wife, and he's been sentenced basically to death in an Iranian prison for doing nothing more than trying to build an orphanage. What are you doing to get him out? And these are questions that they need to be embarrassed in front of masses of people because they're not doing a doggone thing. Well, I'll think of it this way. Uh, you know, there's, there's two stations that I look, watch, you know, in Boise, Channel 6 and Channel 7, KTVB and whatever the Channel 6 is, and I see to myself, say to myself, if they truly cared about this Boise resident, why don't they continually press this issue and ask why Amen. isn't something being done? Amen. You see? I, I think what they happened? should do... It's, I'm telling you, Zeb, it's, 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 it, everybody is so... They've lost their way that there are no principles. It's... I don't know. Well, I'll it's tell you what they should do. Everybody's going to stand up and do something, and some leader will, you know... Emerge. I'll tell you one thing, and then I got another call. I'll tell you one thing yeah. they could do right now. If I were the manager, the program manager of those stations, I would absolutely make it mandatory that three times per hour they put Saeed Abedini's picture on the, pay, on the, on the screen with a very simple, short slogan, Bring This Man Home. And uh, I would put that on at every commercial break as an insert for a public service announcement, and I would never let that go off the air. But no, these people, oh, that might take away some advertising time. Oh, we might lose a 15-second commercial there. We can't do that. Randy, I am outraged that we just don't care anymore. Let me tell you what I've done about this. Real when, fast, real when fast. When issues come up, I will call back there to Washington, D.C. and talk to Crapo, Rich, and Simpson. And I brought this up to them, and I said to their aides, I said to their assistants, 
what is going to be done. Oh, Mr. Simpson, Mr. Crapo, Mr. Rich are going to check into it, sir. Oh, yeah. And I says, well, I want you to send me a letter, because if you make them write a letter, a hard copy, they have to do something. And I have never, I've never received a letter. I've never, they've never, I've never seen them on TV saying anything about it. There's been nothing. Well, I got another bunch of calls waiting, Randy, but I'll tell you what, I'm not going to let this go, and I'm going to keep it in the face of all of our congressmen and senators. Randy, thanks for your call. I appreciate it. Caller number two, you can see by your wristwatch that I have not yet put the weather on yet for Sportsman's Warehouse. Stay on hold. I'll be right with you, I promise. Don't go away. Sportsman's Warehouse, 1940 Bridgeview Boulevard in Twin Falls, with my buddy Reese Widmeyer, and Sportsman's Warehouse carries only... The top quality products for the serious outdoor enthusiast. Everything you need for hunting, fishing, archery, camping, boating, whatever. It's all there, and the best is at Sportsman's Warehouse. Here now, Michael Rogers Weather. Hi, everybody. Michael Rogers from MichaelRogersWeather.com. Fall in south-central Idaho could not get any better than what we have in store for the weekend. Sunny today, 71 for the high. 45 is the overnight low, and it's going to continue through tomorrow and Saturday. Slight like chance of a thunderstorm on Saturday. But this is a really good time of year to be in this location in the Great Basin Intermountain West because it's not cold, it's not hot, and the leaves changing are pretty. Have a great day. Enjoy the weather. The only weather you got. Thank you, the best weatherman around. MichaelRogersWeather.com, Sportsman's Warehouse, the sponsor of our weather in Twin Falls with all of your great outdoor needs. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Pardon me for taking so long. Well, good morning, Jim. Uh, I got the same flyer for uh, Congressman Simpson at my house, and it says on there uh, he voted against Obamacare, and he's committed to uh, repeal Obamacare. I want proof, buddy. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Riley. Riley, wait a minute. The gist of what I'm talking about this morning is Saeed Abedini. I'm not going to waver off that. I don't care right now. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. What I'm saying is, and I want to stay on court here. I want to leave the basketball bouncing on the basketball court that I'm on. I want to talk about, for the remainder of this program, not about Obamacare, not about their voting record. I want to find out why politicians haven't massed together Simpson, Labrador, Crapo, Rich, doesn't make any difference, and even Butch Otter as the governor, and sent letters of demand, got a hold of other people in other states, and made absolute demands, not ask. I don't believe in asking. I want to demand on this situation that they bring this man back to his family. And this is not being done. And we're going to stay on track for this pastor. I don't care right now about Obamacare. I'm talking about this pastor. I agree with you. I, I, I haven't heard anything about this pastor other than you and what I've seen in the, in the parade. I've never heard it on any other channel, any other news thing. I listen to it all day long on the radio. I never heard anybody say anything about it. Well, you're going to hear a lot more. You're going to hear a lot more because I'm very upset about this. I, when Mike Crapo was in town a couple of months ago for a luncheon, and the uh, period of uh, question and answers came up, that was the first question I asked him. What is he doing to try to get Saeed Abedini released? And I'll be honest with you, anytime I'm around one of these politicians, I'm going to do the same thing to each and every one of them. I do not care if they're embarrassed by the question. I do not care if other people roll their eyebrows and say, oh, well, we've got more important things to do. We've got to rub elbows with him so that he tries to do this or that. No, I don't care. We've got a human being that's locked up in a prison cell in one of the worst prisons in the world and being fed barely enough to keep alive. He's been beaten many times. He's not getting treated for his injuries. And our people seem to just look over this. And I'll tell you something, Riley. If people think I'm not upset about this, they don't know me very well. Oh, I can tell you're upset, and I I agree with you, and I am upset too. Why won't they go out and try to get this guy back? Amen. Amen. It's, uh, if it was somebody else for some other reason, they probably would. But, but for some re- for some reason, a Christian pastor who went to go help somebody out of his own time, his own free will, his family's own time, they're not going to do it. Anymore. Well stated. Well stated. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Rod. I got another call. Thank yeah. you, my friend. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Are you outraged about this or not? Yeah, I am. But... 
but I'm also uh, irate about the why is he over there. He had no business being over there with uh, what trouble we're having. Whoa, 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 you're wrong. You're wrong. Uh, you, wait a minute, he's sir. He's going to be a United States citizen. He should be over here in the United States oh. instead of back over there in Iran. Wait a minute, sir. He was... Uh, his I feel sorry for the man and his family, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I have no reason for uh, why he should be over there. Sir, wait a minute. Yeah. You're ignoring some of the facts, and I'm going to try to give you some of the facts. Number one That's is... parent. part of the facts are from you. What's that? I've heard your facts. All right, well then listen closer so you understand the facts. The facts are his mother and father lived there. The facts are he came from there. The facts are he's a converted Christian. He went back over there on government approval, sir, to what build government? this orphanage. What government? Our government? The Iranian. Oh, the Iranian. Yeah, see, you didn't know all the facts, did you? Well, I, you never did say what... Oh, you no, I did, too, in the beginning of this conversation, sir. Well, Listen carefully before you criticize someone. Well, I'm going to still criticize you because I, I don't think you had any business over there. Well, sir, that's... that's the unrest I got over there. So what you're saying, then, if one of our boys goes over to serve, whether it's in Afghanistan, whether it's in Syria, whether it's anywhere in the Middle East, and you don't think they should be there, and if they're captured, boy, that's just tough luck for them. Is that right? Is that what you're saying? No, not really. Okay, then explain it. Well... What are we doing over there besides doing nothing? Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You didn't answer the question. You avoided it. What would you say in that position? They're sent over there, and they're trying to help other people, the same as this pastor was, trying to help other people, and they're captured, and you're going to sit there on the radio and say, well, they shouldn't have been there, so I don't feel sorry for them. Is that your attitude? No. All right, sir. Thank you for your call. You're welcome. I am absolutely adamant. That's the kind of thinking that I can't stand. And if I'm offending somebody, tough. We should be compassionate. We should be absolutely outraged that an American citizen is overseas, locked up in a vermin-infested prison, and nobody cares. And then you get the attitude, well, he shouldn't have been there in the first place. Can I weigh in on this? Maybe you'd better, because I'm going to have to suck on a blood pressure, pressure pill. Okay, uh, just real quick, because I know we have Jerry, Jerry Voss on the phone. Number one, he was over there doing good. Number two, if we want to bring this to the forefront, we have to be bringing it out there. We have to be contacting our legislators and our congressmen. We have to be contacting the uh, network, the newsrooms and everything, because they are not going to report on something that uh, they think nobody wants to listen to. Uh, let, me th let me throw this at you real quick, Gina, Go before ahead. I take this call, and then i got a Go commercial, too. What would be the difference? What would be the difference if the Olympics were held in a Middle Eastern country and someone from our team, the United States, was captured and held at ransom? Would the difference be any different at all? Would we have the attitude of, oh, well, they shouldn't have been there in the first place? Uh, no, I think the attitude would be different. And um, hello, Bo Bergdahl. Yeah. He's still over there. Yeah. What are we doing? What is our What is our government doing to try and get him back besides saying, oh, well, we're not going to deal with terrorists? Lip service. I'm sorry, but he's exactly like Saeed Abedini. He's over there. He's captured. And uh, what are we doing to get him back? Nothing. Exactly. I've got a commercial break, and I'm just really livid that's that the awesome. attitude of Americans is just, oh, well, gosh, that's too bad. Gee, I, I, I've got to go get my car washed. Oh, well, gee, I'm late. I've got to go take the grandkids out for ice cream. Yep. And an American citizen is laying on the floor of a cement cell with nothing as any amenities or anything and being beaten, and, and we don't care. My personal feeling is, my personal feeling is, there should be a... SWAT-like team go in there and just shoot to kill anybody that stands in the way and get him out of that prison. This is what this is my perspective. They're over there praying that their troops will come and rescue them. Yeah. They're praying for it. And what are we doing? Nothing. What is our government doing? We're doing exactly. nothing, and it sickens me. We've and the attitude that. of saying, "Well, they shouldn't have been there, and it's just too bad." I can't accept that. I can't either. Jerry, I'll be right with you. Don't forget, great big tire sale going on at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations. And uh, along with this big tire sale, they've got a lot of the custom wheels that will dress up your four-wheeled wonder. Check those out. They've got the best in shocks and struts. They've got the best in front-end alignments, the best in brake service. They've got the best of everything 
for you. Stop in and the best of service. They've got tires like the light truck SUV tire Wildcat AT2 on sale right now for one seventeen fifteen. All seven locations serving you. Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Lane and Rupert, John on Pauline and Randy on Overland and Burley, the best. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not on this program, and I want to say this emphatically. I'm not on this program to make friends. I'm not on this program to have everybody think, oh boy, what a good old boy. I'm on this program to give you the news from my perspective and also to help get you involved. Jerry, quickly, I've got one minute left. Yes. You know, if he was a Muslim, he would have been out of there already. This nation is at war with us Christians. They don't like us. They don't like anything about us. And the main people in our government that are against us is our congressman, our president, and our Senate. I got a feeling they don't like anything that has anything to do with Christianity. And they're doing everything they can to hurt us, kill us, destroy us, destroy our churches, destroy places where we worship. They're doing everything to cut, you know, any tax exempt benefits or anything. Absolutely well I think stated. That's our whole problem in a nutshell. Well stated, we need Jerry. To get rid of these Muslim-based Congress people and get some Christians in there. Uh, well stated, Jerry, and you certainly have a right to your opinion, and I respect it. Thank you. I got to run to the news, but I do thank you for your call. Thank you, Jerry. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I'm upset about this because uh, I listened to the wife and I've talked to the lawyers and everything on this program and tears came down my cheeks to think that this man basically, it, it, there's no hope. There's no hope. The people here, and like that caller earlier, with an attitude of, ah, he shouldn't have been there in the first place. The man was brought over there. And he was working with the Iranian government's approval to build that orphanage and then he's arrested and there's no hope. And nobody seems to care. Well, I do. I'll be back in six. Uh, welcome back, hour number two. Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell. And uh, our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Thank you for all you do. Mighty fine people, all seven locations. Uh, along with our great advertisers like Lease Furniture Floors and more. We really appreciate everything they do, too. And we'll tell you more about them in just a little bit. Um, also, I want to remind you that we are very blessed to have with us on this program our friends at Hanson Mortuary with Joel Heward, new owner and manager at 710 6th Street in Rupert. Locally owned and operated, and as I've said so many times, during such a difficult time as the passing of a loved one, they want to meet your expectations and exceed them as far as taking care of you and serving your family. And always with the highest ethical standards, with unquestioned integrity. Please get a hold of them today and talk about the pre-planning of funerals at 436-5636, Hanson Mortuary in Rupert. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go via the telephone line over the river and through the woods to the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce we go. Here's the lovely Kay Cameron. Good morning, Kay. Good morning. How are How you? <laughs> well, I tell you what, yesterday, uh, my fat, chubby little body is not used to seeing a 44 to 45 degree temperature downgrade, and I was a little chilly, and I went against what science said. Science said that fat people don't get cold that easy. They're wrong. It was a little chilly. It was 34 when I got in my car this morning. Woo! And uh, now that you're at the office and you're all safe and warm and snuggled in behind your desk, what is going on at the Chamber of Commerce? <laughs> well, that's a good way of putting it. Hey, you know, fall is a beautiful time of year. There's just always still a lot of activities going on, a lot of activities in the community. We've got high school sports that have started up. We've got fall activities coming on. And it's a really nice time to get out and about and enjoy this beautiful community. Absolutely. Now, along with some of the activities that you mentioned, and I know you're heavily involved in all the community activities, is there anything specific that you want to highlight today? Oh, any 
Anything specific? Well, I want to say thank you to all of those business owners and operators that participated in our seminar on Monday because we had an awesome turnout. We had great information presented. And I really believe that everybody who attended um, our seminar on health care reform and the Affordable Care Act walked away with knowledge that they didn't know before. You know, one thing I would say, and I think you're going to agree with me, is that right now, whether you're a photographer or not, go treat yourself and your family and go buy, whether it's a little disposable camera or whether you're really into photography, you know, kind of spruce up on what your knowledge is about cameras, and you will not find a more scenic state to live in when the fall hits with all the different leaves and everything. It's just beautiful. Oh, absolutely, and the last couple of mornings where it's really cooled off, it's so fun to look at the river. It's so calm in the morning, and there's just a little bit of steam rising off of it, and it's just really picturesque, and it's very beautiful. Absolutely. So get out and enjoy it, and, you know, this weekend there are a ton of things going on. Um, I just want to mention a few. We have concert tickets still available for the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, how exciting that we've got the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band coming to the Minicaja area this weekend. That's awesome. To celebrate Minidoka Centennial, um, get out and enjoy a concert. You're not ever, uh, well, not, not in the near future are you going to get an opportunity to see such a big band um, so close to home. So that's going to be a great opportunity. Well, you know, it's not only a great band. It's a band with so much history. It's a band with so many great t songs, like you know, all the way from Mr. Bojangles on to the present day. I mean, these guys have really turned out some outstanding music. Yeah, they really have, and so that's going to be a lot of fun. Also, on Saturday, we've got the POW MIA um, activities that take place in the Rupert Square every year. They've got... They've got a really, really neat celebration that they do, and it's... Uh, it's really cool. So get out and celebrate with them. Walk a mile in her shoes for domestic violence awareness, and that takes place on Saturday as well. It looks like there's a 5K fun run. There's a golf scramble fundraiser at the Rupert Elks this weekend. There's a ton of stuff on Saturday. I mean, the list just goes, seriously, just goes on and on. So um, also, good luck to all of the high school football teams this weekend. Um, Friday night's always a big night for high school sports, and I know a lot in our community follow that and pay attention. So good luck to all of our local teams. And like I said, just enjoy this beautiful community. The, the leaves are starting to turn in, in places and, and little pockets of color everywhere, and it's just beautiful. Hey, by the way, I would like to invite you, if you have an opportunity, to attend Lunch Bunch next Thursday at our new location, which is Perkins Restaurant over at the Burley Inn. And I will personally buy your lunch if you'll show up and be a part of our Lunch Bunch. Okay. I will put that on my calendar, but for some reason I think I have a conflict that day. Well, cancel the conflict. <laughs> okay, well, if you can make it, I'll certainly buy your lunch. Okay, that sounds great. Kay, at the Chamber of Commerce, tell everybody how they, if they have questions, can get a hold of the Chamber. They can come by and see us. We're located at 1177 7th Street in Hayburn. Um, just on the banks of the beautiful Snake River, so stop by and see us. Give us a call at 208-679-4793. Find us on the Internet at minicasualchamber.com. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. There you go. The lovely Kay Cameron, director of the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce. Kay, God bless you, and just enjoy. Honestly, just enjoy sitting there watching the ducks and everything outside in the river. It's fantastic. Absolutely, and even though it's a little frigid outside, it's still beautiful. So everybody have a safe and wonderful weekend. All right, we'll talk to you next week. Thanks. All right, Kay Cameron with the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce. Uh, let's see, we're going to talk about some public service announcements here for a few moments and uh, kind of reiterate what Kay was saying just a moment because I'm very much involved with the 6th Annual POWMIA Recognition Services that are going to be going on at the Rupert City Park, and I'll tell you more about that in just a moment. When you think about life insurance, think about Cameron and Siemens. Well, then think and do. And when you do, call the number, 436-4424. Health insurance, retirement planning, employee 
benefits, everything you need for your security for your business and your home and family, you get a hold of them today. Very dedicated and responsive to your needs. Dean and Todd at Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert, 436-4424. Taking a look at some of the activities going on this weekend, just like Kay had mentioned, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, sixth annual POW MIA Recognition Day is going to be at the Rupert Square, and that is a beautiful square. It just that's hometown America right there, and we're certainly looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to be blessed with John McEwen and his sons of the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. They're going to be singing for us at that Recognition Day, and uh, the recognition program will begin at 2 p.m. Don't miss it. There's going to be pre-music and pre-activities leading up to two, but don't miss a minute of it over there in Rupert. And then that evening, this Saturday evening, Minidoka County Centennial Concert with the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. Mr. Bojangles and all their great tunes. I mean, this band has been a band of history, a band of of America. Their history uh, and what they've done in the music has just been absolutely phenomenal and that's going to be at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds uh, Saturday night. Don't don't miss it. It's going to be fantastic. And then also during the day on Saturday uh, the second annual Panther Power Dash 5K and one mile run family run for technology and uh, the Power Dash starts at 9 a.m. at Paul Elementary and uh, registration can be Paul paid at Paul Elementary, or it's too late to probably mail them. You better stop in and uh, get registered for this fun run. Going to be a lot of fun this weekend. And real quick, what else have I got? Oh, another thing. There have been the threats of potential closures of rural post offices in smaller towns. Don't complain if you don't voice your opinion. And I'm telling you that the Postal Service is going to hold a meeting at Murtaugh High School Cafeteria on Boyd Street at the school on October 2nd at 6 p.m. You'd better be there to voice your displeasure with what's going on with the Postal Service possible closures. And last but not least, uh, there will be eight weeks of beginner art classes for ages 10 and older, taught by my old buddy, Carl Clark, and that's going to start on September 24th from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall of the Rupert United Methodist Church over in Rupert. For more information, contact 436-3354. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, some of our public service announcements, and right now... I'm going to ask our lovely and beautiful and always capable board operator slash engineer slash quarterback of the team is Karen Anderson ready from Rock Creek Growers. I am dialing now. Dialing now. Dialing for dollars. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm just really anxious to hear what Karen's got to say at Rock Creek Growers today. And later on this morning... At 10.30, I want to remind you that we're going to have George Mason University law professor, and he's one of the most respected people of his uh, circle of influence around the Middle East and Syria. Professor Jeremy Rabkin is going to be on talking about this mess we have with Syria, Assad, Russia, and the entirety of the Middle East, and he's going to be on at 10.30 this morning. Let's see if the lovely Karen's on the line. Good morning, Karen from Rock Creek Growers. Are you there? Uh, Cindy's running to get her. Oh, running, you say? Running, yes. <laughs> well, what do you want to talk about, kid? <laughs> well, I don't know there, mister. Uh, we've got a lot of things, of course, going on. And, uh, of course, uh, Rupert POW MIA yeah. yep. Recognition Day. And uh, I, I really wanted to be there. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to. But uh, I really would appreciate it if everybody just went out and showed some support. You know, and last hour, I got really worked up about this Pastor Abedini and his not being uh, sought after by our government and others. And I made a statement last hour, and I want to clarify this. I really do want to clarify one statement with you, especially, Gina. Okay. You've been in this business, and you've been my uh, gracious board operator and quarterback of the team for many years now. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not in this business to gain friends. We are not in this business to do anything except provide information and try to get people involved into saving, preserving, and honestly helping their lifestyle. 
Agreed. That's why we put the news stories out that we do. Yeah. If yeah. I wanted to make friends, I would not be in such a tempestuous situation of trying to relay the news of what's happening not only here in Idaho but all over the United States. I could be a goody two-shoes and say, oh, the world is rosy. We're all going to have yeah. lollipops and ice cream at 3 o'clock. I'm not going to do that. And when somebody calls in and gives misinformation or wrong information, they will be corrected. And I stand behind what I said earlier. And as you should. And on a final note on that, you know, it's not our job to make friends. And it's not our job to bring out all of the fluffy news. Sometimes we have to talk about the difficult things. And sometimes those difficult things require a loud voice and for everybody to get involved. There and you go. That said, we have Miss Karen on the phone. Uh, is there a reference there that she has a loud voice? Let's clarify that. Well, after. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was wondering. <laughs> Okay, we'll, we'll minimize the threat of loudness. Ladies and gentlemen, here now is the suave and very sophisticated and very eloquent voice of the beautiful Rockery Growers, Karen Anderson. How's that for a lead-in? Oh, that's just wonderful. Just make my day, Sam. Okay, now what's happened over at Rockery Growers? Ah, we have uh, bumped up our fall yard sale to 40% off on plant material, so... Talk about um, timing, you know. The weather's absolutely beautiful. It's cooled off. Um, what, a, what a time to plant and not have to worry about stressing your plants. Let their feet get settled in for the winter and uh, take advantage of, you know, the prices because 40% is about as usually is about as much as we go off. So we're there. Wow, you're at 40% off? Yes. Wow. What are some of the great items where they can literally come in and get a great super buy? Tell us about some of that. Well, it's all of your plant material. So trees, shrubs, perennials, um, anything that's living and growing out there, you can do the 40% off. There's a few varieties that people have taken advantage of the 35% off, and there's a few select varieties that we now are out of stock. But that's a handful. So compared to the overall... Um, stock out here, you you should be able to find about anything that you want. Well, no, wait a minute. You said anything living. You didn't stick Randy in a big vase or something, did you? No. Oh. No. I, I put him under the hardscape. Those are twenty percent off. <laughs> Okay, and you know, I bet a lot of people are saying, wow, for that kind of a saving, we better run in there today, and it's so easy to find this place. I'm telling you folks, don't worry about it. It's at the furthest southeast corner of Kimberly. Aha, there you are, on the corner of Maxine Lane and Irene Streets, and what are the hours that you're open, Karen? Uh, weekdays, we're open from um, 9 to 5, and um, on Saturdays from 9 to 5. Three, excuse me, to three. Okay. And, you know, I can't think of a better weekend. It's going to be really nice on Saturday. A lot of sunshine, a lot of temperatures probably into the mid to higher 70s. What a great day to come by Rock Creek Growers and find exactly what they're looking for. Mm hmm Yep. It is going to be gorgeous. So it's the perfect time to get out and get things planted. We have so many people ask, okay, so we wait till spring, you know, the difference being is those roots will continue to grow and get established during the winter months unless we have a freeze that goes down, you know, two, three feet, which rarely happens. Um, they'll, they'll help get established during the winter months, so they'll come out and actually put a little bit of growth on next year versus planting in the springtime, it okay. takes them the year to get established. So you're getting that much further ahead. See, you're working with the professionals, ladies and gentlemen, at Rock Creek Growers. Randy and Karen Anderson and the entire family over there, they know. So, Karen, we're going to send them by. I want to say thank you to you for coming on the program this morning. As always, you do a wonderful job. Rock Creek Growers on the corner of Maxine Lane and Irene Streets in Kimberly. Number to call, 423-6800. Have a great weekend and enjoy the outside, Karen. Yep, we will, and we expect to see everybody here. All right, Karen. <laughs> Thank you. A lovely Bye. lady right there, Karen Anderson. Really, really nice people. Okay, i got to check my list here. Oh, Burley Glass, Gentle Ben. Hello, Gentle Ben. Yep, big guy with a great big heart, and he's just such a nice person. Burley Glass, 1029 Overland Avenue in Burley, and don't forget, working hard to provide great service to all the communities in the Magic Valley. 
the weather's a little chilly. Now, yesterday, Deanna and I, I got to tell you, we turned the uh, electric heat on a little bit yesterday for in the later part of the afternoon. It was a little chilly. Well, you know what? You might be losing a lot of your heat efficiency out your windows. Well, you better check your windows and consider installing vinyl windows from Atrium Windows right from Burley Glass, 1029 Overland Avenue in Burley, and the number is 678-1459. Gentle Ben, the rest of the crew at Burley Glass, serving you. Nice people. In just a few minutes, we have one of my very, very favorite segments coming on the air, but before we get there, oh yeah, you're way ahead of me, you know what I'm talking about. Before we get there, I also want to remind you about Let's Ride, where the fun is sold. Now, Goober and I, yesterday, we jumped on the four-wheelers, <laughs> kind of a funny story, jumped on the four-wheelers at about four o'clock yesterday afternoon, each of us had a light windbreaker on, we drove out of the yard, turned around and come right back and got a heavier windbreaker on. Let's Ride, Highway 24 between Rupert and Burley, the number to call, 436-4771, they're open Tuesdays through Saturdays, and now, now, don't forget this, to get your watercraft winterized. Mmm, don't forget it. You're going to all of a sudden in January say, oh, what did I do? Well, don't put it off. Get it done now. Don't let your watercraft freeze up. And they've got all the new 2014 snowmobiles coming in and all the 2014 ATVs in stock. You'd better get over there because this is true. It's where the fun is sold. Let's ride Highway 24 between Rupert and Burley. Holy cow! Holy dogs! Where'd all these puppies come Where from? leave all these dogs out for heaven's sakes what's going on here holy bucket of bolts ken mort minidoka animal control who let the dogs out well good morning zeb good morning I, buddy I sure didn't <laughs> <laughs> you're catching them you're not turning them loose exactly oh man what's going on in your world oh not a whole lot i uh, just wanted to feature buddy uh he is a boxer lab cross about two years old uh great dog he was uh found on us out uh, northeast of paul out in the country uh the people that called me on him think that they that he had been dumped out there because none of their neighbors had ever seen him before oh boy but uh we found out just the other day that he really en enjoys playing uh with tennis balls and will actually you toss it up in the air and he'll catch it and that's so, i mean he's uh fun-loving dog could you possibly see if you could call chicago cubs and see if you can get him a contract they need somebody in the outfield you know, that's a good idea i mean we could he, he could be on that uh, baseball buddy or something <laughs> okay and and but if anybody's interested in him and that they can uh, reach us at the uh animal facility at 438-2200 or they can reach me on my cell phone at 670-7268 Okay. Now, what is, I'd also what, like to send a shout out to uh, an anonymous donor who uh, contacted me the other day and sent me over to Cal Ranch to pick up 24 40 pound bags of dog food that they donated to now, us. Now, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. That is worth that. Uh, we got to have that again. Our choir, we're paying them a large amount of money to stay on call 24 7. Let's hear two more great big loud hallelujahs. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There you go. Now, Ken, you mean to tell me that some really nice person bought all that dog food and donated it? Yes, they did. And we want to we want to really thank them. And that they wanted to be left anonymous because they don't want anybody knowing who it was. So um, we're keeping that. But if they're listening, thank you very much. Wow, that must make... It's got to put a little bubbly in your eye to think that there's some really nice people out there like that. It does. I mean, and it's it, just when they do that stuff, and it uh, it really really helps us out a lot. Now, you mentioned to me on programs past that you're looking for other items too. That maybe people have got some old towels they're not using. You need those at the uh, dog center, don't you? Yes, we do. I um, mean, it helps us when we have to bathe them on that for being able to dry them off, and then also. If, uh, if we need to, we can uh, use them for bedding for uh, some of our smaller dogs that don't have a lot of fur in there so that they're not laying on either the whole, or the cold concrete or the, uh, the cold kennel floors. And that's uh, also old uh, blankets, sheets, uh, anything like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you've got an old travel kennel and stuff in it that you're not using anymore, don't have a, have a use for, and that, uh, we're looking for those. 
We're also looking for, uh, here, I'll uh, have more information next week, but we are going to start um, some of the uh, remodeling on, it on the facility that we're planning on moving to. I see. And we're going to be looking for volunteers to come in and help us with removing carpet and painting and, and just basically getting the, the facility ready so that we can, uh, once we get it up and going, we can actually get moved over there where we're going to have a lot more room on that uh and it's going to be a lot safer for the dogs. Uh, we're actually going to have an area where we can take the dogs out, turn them loose into a large fenced-in area to let them run and play and get the exercise that they need. And also, um, I mean, if there's anybody wanting to volunteer on that to come in and walk dogs, on that, just come on over uh, during the uh, morning hours. Where I'm normally there around eight, and we start uh, start cleaning, and it, it makes it wonderful if somebody comes over and just. Just to volunteer to walk the dogs. Okay. Uh, and, uh, so they can get some exercise as well. All right. Well, now, that is excellent. And it sounds like you've got a lot of things going on over there where senior citizens could help and uh, school children with their projects, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, etc. cetera. Uh, tell me one more time about Buddy real fast. Give us an update on what Buddy is, what kind of breed, uh, a little bit about him real fast. Okay, Buddy, he is a boxer lab cross, approximately two years old. Uh, real joyful and that fun-loving dog. Um, he just—I mean, he, like I said, he like. We found out the other day he likes to play with uh, tennis balls and and catch them. And, and that, I mean, and you, you sit there and bounce it, and he'll he'll sit there and watch it until you actually toss it to him. Oh man, I tell you what. And all they have to do is call you at what number? At four three eight twenty two hundred or six seven zero seven two six eight. Ken Mort, one of my dear friends, and uh, God bless you, man. Thank you so much. And thank you, Zeb. You betcha. Who let those dogs out? My Who goodness. I tell you what, I've got a lot of respect for Ken Mort and what he's doing, uh, helping the dogs in our area. He's really concerned about uh, the uh, dogs and all the canines, and I appreciate him. Thank you, Ken. Um, next week on Thursday, I want to stress the fact that we are moving our lunch bunch, Zeb's lunch bunch, to Perkins Restaurant and Bakery at 800 North Overland in Burley, where they've got a wonderful tagline that says, Perkins, where we believe in being best buds with your taste buds. I'm asking, urging, and imploring everybody to be there at Lunch Bunch. It's going to be a special Lunch Bunch, first of all, because it's a new location. We're all going to be sitting together. Please be there at 1130 next Thursday, the 26th, at Lunch Bunch at Perkins. Great food, great service, really nice people at Perkins Restaurant and Bakery in Burley. When you talk about nice people, that leads us right down the path to Rita Ramsey. Good morning, Rita. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. Nice to have you on the program. Uh, Rita, I don't know if you heard earlier this morning, I was just a little bit more than teed off about the lack of response, the lack of help, the lack of anybody saying anything as far as our politicos, the lack of Obama doing anything on Pastor Saeed Abedini that's over in an Iranian prison and probably will die there. And it looks like an American citizen from Boise, Idaho is not going to be cared about. And I'm livid about this. It's a sad deal that this has happened and that he's over there, and I don't know whether Obama really would or could do anything, but I do know that it needs to go through channels, and the first people that need to be doing it are his representatives right there in Boise, and then they need to go to our state, or our federal, which is um, uh, Labrador is his congressman, and then our senators, and they need to be doing something. When people were, you remember when that Marine was detained in, um, in Mexico? Mm -hmm. It was his congresswoman who got that all arranged. I mean, it, it was brought out on the news and everything, but she was the one doing all the legwork and everything else, and they actually got him, um, you know, released from there. And so it's, it's got to be the local people because... You're one in 300 million to Obama. He doesn't care. Yeah, and I'll tell you something else. All people have to do is just go to bed tonight, lay your head on the pillow, and think about if it were you. Think about it. Your family is thousands and thousands of miles away. Your government doesn't seem to care. Your president doesn't seem to care. There's no hope. You're in total despair. You're living in a vermin-infested room called a jail cell. You're being beaten up 
on a regular basis, where is the hope? This man must be in complete despair. Oh, I'm sure he is, and I'm sure it's horrible for his family. I can't even begin to imagine. But like I said, that's got to. He, he, those people um, have got to make sure that they just keep nagging at their congressmen and their U.S. senators and saying, "Hey, you know, is, is something happening there? What are you doing?" And they haven't given accounting of it. Rita, I want to shift gears a little bit, and you're probably not going to agree with me on this. Uh, you might, and if you do, all the better. But I've looked at this Syrian situation. I've looked at the Middle East situation. I've studied this problem with Putin being now basically handed the uh, the reins of the stagecoach as being the world leader in Russia. I've looked at this whole mess, and then yesterday I studied the tape of the interview with President Assad on Fox News, and I honestly think we're being set up to lose again. I honestly believe that this Obama administration, using and... Uh, very tactfully, every situation they can to draw attention away from Benghazi, away from the IRS, away from the First Amendment scandal, away from Obamacare. I think they're utilizing this, and I think behind the scenes, they really are pulling the puppet strings. How wrong do you think I am? Well, I, I think there's probably some validity to that. I, I don't know exactly, just like a lot of other people don't, but... You know, when um, Pre Syria's President Assad says that it's unrealistic that his government is do, you know, would do this, it had to be the, the terrorists, and that's basically what he said. He denied that they did it and said that it was the terrorists, and it makes you wonder if he's really telling the truth or not. But I, I think the whole thing actually started up as Obama trying to cover up uh, running guns. Mm -hmm. Because that's what happened in Benghazi. That's what Benghazi was all about, is trying to cover up before the election that they were running guns to, to uh, al-Qaeda. Did and, you, um, did you and, happen... You know, this deal with Syria's come along, and he's just, uh, you know, Syria's saying no, and, and now President Obama's made to look like a real dummy. Yeah. Did you hear, uh, there was a small little excerpt on the news late last night, and then again early, early this morning, and I do not have the congressman's name, a Democratic con congressman, made a statement, and I'm trying to find out more about this, but uh, and I'll use this as alleged. I'm not going to stand behind this as a concrete, verified statement. But I heard allegedly that a Democratic congressman said, well, the problem in Benghazi is really back to the people that lost their lives. If they would have called earlier for help, it probably would have got there. Well, I don't know how much earlier they needed to ask for help because they were denied over a series of a few weeks saying that they did not have enough security there. Yeah, and when you hear the left trying to cover up their tail from being stepped on, uh, it doesn't bode well. I think there's a lot of hidden facts out there that we need to know. Well, and, and everything that they do and all the stuff that happens, they're trying to see if they can't slide that Benghazi thing away. And I'm glad to see that there are some Congress people that are still digging and calling in uh, people to testify and asking questions and stuff because we need to know. It, the, America needs to know. I think I already know. America needs to know what really happened there. Yeah. And it was, uh, I really think that they probably didn't care whether or not those guys were protected over there because they were witnesses to what was really going on. Did you hear, and knowing you, and I say this in all due respect, but you're a news junkie like I am, uh, did you hear Bob Gates and Leon Panetta? I was absolutely shocked at the way Leon Panetta asked, answered a question regarding the red line comment from Obama, and I wrote it down, and he said, if we, meaning the United States, draw a red line and it's crossed... We damn sure better honor it. That was Leon Panetta yesterday. Well, I think Panetta is showing that he does have a little bit of uh, um, knowledge about what should happen and how you have to deal with your foes. And yet, while he was in the position that he was in, 
President Obama made him look like he was just a dunderhead and didn't mm -hmm. really have any credibility. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how worried are you right now that somewhere down the line in the not-too-distant future, I honestly think within the next 30 days, there is going to be an appeasement, there's going to be a capitulation, there's going to be an acceptance, and I think this guy, Assad, that came across as a dentist in a business suit in that interview, I think he's going to walk free, walk tall, and stand with Putin and laugh at the rest of us. Oh, I think he's. I think he will. I don't see how anything else can happen. I mean, we can't do anything now. We've turned it over to Putin, and so Putin can do whatever he wants. Yeah. Another subject I want to ask you about this morning is, in the last couple of days, Rita, in my office, I have had numerous people, not only from here in the Magic Valley, but I've had them from Indiana, Wisconsin, Jacksonville, Florida, others, send me notices about major problems going on in our school systems today to where students, whether it's elementary or high school, are being subjected to Middle Eastern religion influence coming into the class classroom and basically denouncing and downgrading Christianity. What are your thoughts about what is an indoctrination program that I think is very insidious? Well, I think it's really sad that they'll let them do that, but they won't let us say, you know, won't let us have a prayer in school to begin school and that type of thing. But it all boils down to one thing. It's whatever we'll tolerate. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I hate to take away from that particular thing, but people have got to get involved and go locally to those places and say, wait a minute, you know, we need to, we need to find out what's going on here and, and uh, start, to start being a little bit more down the road. If you're going to bring that in, then we want this. And if you're not, then maybe we just need to leave it. But the people who are affected in those school districts need to get on the bandwagon and do something. The thing that I was alluding to was there's been a couple of different school districts, one in Texas and one in South Carolina, that people have um, looked at their kids' high school um, uh, textbooks and found out that the the textbook people have totally um, reported the amendments to the Constitution totally wrong. Mm -hmm. They're teaching the kids wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, what happened was um, the second one of the deals in the in one of the books. I've got the page here. It says it, in explaining what the Second Amendment is. It says the Second and Third Amendments grant citizens the right to bear arms as members of a militia of citizen soldiers and prevent the government from housing troops in private homes in peacetime. And that's their explanation of the Second Amendment. So they combine it with the Third, and that's all that they offer. Yeah. Well, enough people were really irritated about it that they went to the... Um, to the school district and started complaining and now they're going to start doing what they need to do to make sure that those kids are taught what the second amendment is and what the third amendment is not that they're just a all oh, this has to do with guns and housing the soldiers well those are two separate amendments but they make it sound like that the guns are so that so that um, they can protect themselves from from whatever but it's more the government than anything but we have a right to protect ourselves yeah. and from a tyrant who would be a government if that comes to pass and yet they won't they won't teach it that way and so by people getting involved that's how they make changes and that's the only way they're going to make changes people sitting on their couch or or uh, just saying well you know i'm sure that something will happen on that and nothing ends up happening and the same thing has happened here with the you know uh uh, Obainer has decided that he's going to back the the Congress on, on defunding Obamacare. Mm -hmm. And that's only happened because there's been numbers of people call him and probably say, hey, you're not going to be sitting in your office as one of the congressmen after next year if you don't get on board with them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so my plea is, did everyone in this audience call their congressmen and their senators and say, defund Obamacare, but let the government go ahead and be funded for the rest of it? If not, you didn't do your duty, and by darn, that's what it takes. A phone call. It doesn't cost anything for a phone call. It costs you 10 minutes worth of time, maybe, to make phone calls. 
to three different places and tell them how you feel. Absolutely. And that makes the difference. Rita, I want to go back and, and kind of backtrack a little bit on what you said a moment ago, and I have a couple of questions. I absolutely can't understand why textbooks are being written the way they are for either the elementary or the high school grades and in such a slipshod, not historically correct atmosphere. Let me go back and tell you this, that I know from the father in Tennessee that was adamant about his daughter not attending a field trip that was going to go to an Islamic mosque and not take part in Islamic prayers and not take part in reading of the Koran. And then the school said, okay, if she doesn't go on the field trip, she's going to take a zero. Well, she said, no, I'm not going to take a zero. And they said, yes, you will stay here at the school and you will write a theme about Islam. And here's the textbook. They gave her a textbook that had been issued to that school that had five pages in the textbook about the oh the great benefits of Islam to the world and uh, and the Islamic belief etc they had one page almost a full page on Christianity and this girl went home and told her dad look I am not going to write this about how great Muslims and and Islamic traditions are I'm not going to do this against my faith the father went to the school board in Tennessee and said she's not going to do it she is not going to get a zero now what are you going to do they backed up and they gave her a grade, and they would not force her to, or coerce her to be a part of something she didn't believe in. More people need to take that stand. That's absolutely right. It's got to start right here with us individually, going and, and bringing out the point and, and, and letting them see how absurd it is. A lot of times it's just somebody that's really off the rail asking to have something crazy happen. The other thing is I want to know why somebody wasn't screaming to high heaven. You know, you holler at us about church and state, which doesn't really even exist, but you always say that, and yet you're always trying to bring a different religion in yeah. making our kids study it yeah. and learn it. Yeah. yeah, but there again, though, uh, I think personally this is going to cause more ripples in public education than ever before because I think parents that are being very concerned, whether they're Presbyterian, whether they're Mormon, whether they're they're Catholic, whether they're Lutheran, it doesn't make any difference. Why should you subject your children to something that's going to disrupt and absolutely distract from the family beliefs of their own part of Christianity? Well, we shouldn't, and that's why parents need to sit down with their kids and ask them some questions about what they're, what they're learning and say, hey, you know, um, I guess we, we better just kind of keep an eye on what, what's going on with your stuff so that if they need to go and speak with the the people at the school that they can because I, I think in, in our area, now it may not be in all areas, but in our area I think there's a lot of people who would just be absolutely flabbergasted to find out that kind of thing was happening and so if some individual teacher or instructor decided to do that, they would just be, oh my gosh, we can't do something like that. What are you thinking? Yeah, but, but unless somebody brings it to their attention... You know. Now, I will say this, though, and then I've got to do a weather cast with Michael, so stay by. Uh, but I will say this, Rita, short answer on this. I think that uh, comparing when you and I were in school with the textbooks, we should be absolutely adamant about asking and requesting for textbooks that are being given to our children to really see, understand, and read what's in there, because I think it'll shock a lot of people. Oh, absolutely. And what's missing is the part that should shock everybody. Absolutely. I've got a weather update brought to you this hour by Reg Trading Post 203 5th Avenue South in Twin Falls and of course Reg Trading Post in historic Old Town Twin Falls since 1936. All your guns all your ammo, all your accessory and they'll give you top dollar on trade-ins for your used guns. Please stop in and see Ryan and the rest of the crew today at Reg Trading Post in Twin. Here's Michael Rogers Weather. Hi everybody, Michael Rogers from MichaelRogersWeather.com Fall in South Central Idaho could not get any better than what we have in store for the weekend. Sunday today, 71 for the high, 45 at the overnight low. And it's going to continue through tomorrow and Saturday. Slight chance of a thunderstorm on Saturday. But this is a really good time of year to be in this location in the Great Basin Inner Mountain West because it's not cold, it's not hot, and the leaves changing are pretty. Have a great day. Enjoy the weather. Feel the weather you got. Thank you, Michael. Reg Trading Post bringing you the weather this hour. 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls. The best. You stop in and see them today. 
Rita, uh, I wanted to also ask you, uh, you touched on it earlier, but we're seeing more, I think, backbone, and if you want to be very, very uh, literal and blunt, uh, guts from some of the Republicans fighting Obamacare, and I was very impressed with Ted Cruz last night. I was very impressed with some of the other Republican leadership saying, wait a minute, enough is enough. We'll go ahead and fund the government, but we're not going to fund Obamacare. We are in control in the House, and you're going to have to listen to us. What are your thoughts? Oh, that's exactly right. But the main reason that all these others are starting to get on board is because they know that their, their job is in jeopardy. That the very thing has happened right here in Idaho with, with Congressman Simpson. Um, uh, Bri- I think his name is Brian... Brian Smith. Brian Smith, who is going to run against Simpson, has, has made a few statements, and, and there's been a few of them on the radio, and, and um, I don't know whether it's to goad him into actually starting to vote like he should, or whether it's like, hey, you know, we'll just see, we'll just see what you do. Because I can't believe that over a year before elections that they would be, you know, putting that information out. However, I think it's made a difference, so I'm sure it's a good strategy that he's got going. But our own congressman wasn't really in favor of this. His answer is, well, I voted a number of times against Obamacare. How many times do I have to do it? Well, you know what? You better do it right here and now. And I think his phone lines have been totally just clogged with people calling and telling him. However, there needs to be two or three times as many people call to let him know, hey, buddy, you're not voicing our opinion. We want you to voice our opinion. And these guys are starting to run a little bit like, "Uh uh-oh, they're on to us. And they're going to have to show some accountability. So the people's voice really does make a difference. And if we'll... uh, uh, keep hounding them, I, th- I think we can make a difference. I have uh, kind of a personal gripe or vendetta that uh, Mike Simpson and I have not gotten along in the last year or so very well at all. And uh, I'm going to be very blunt to some of the Republicans out there in the audience that uh, have voiced to me concern about my attitude towards Mike Simpson. Um, he is a representative that works for me. I don't work for him. And on one particular occasion, Rita, when we were talking about Michelle Bachman and her criticism of uh, Hillary Clinton appointing Muslim Brotherhood members to her staff and others to the administration, it was Mike Simpson, our congressman, that wrote a letter of uh, repudiation against Michelle Bachman. He instituted it and said that uh, these uh, Muslim Brotherhood members should not be questioned. Rita, I submit to you that any and all Muslim Brotherhood members should be questioned. They should be scrutinized and they should have their lives laid out on the table to know exactly where they are, who they stand for, and what their attributes are or aren't. And I think Mike Simpson owes Michelle Bachman an apology, and I think he owes me an apology for calling us McCarthyists. Well, I think that's true, and the the deal is is that I think, and <laughs> I, I don't know how you uh, enforce it, because I don't believe that our president could actually pass a security check with all the people that he's associated with in his life. And I mentioned this before. One time I was just getting ready to leave work, and there was a fellow showed up here, and he said, I need to ask you a few questions, and welcome to find out one of our employees is a a National Guard reservist, and he was um, training in some uh, computer tactic type things and stuff, and so they, he had to get a security clearance. That fellow sat in my office for two hours that night asking me questions. Well, do you think that this, this fellow has ever, has he been abroad? Do you think he's associated with, and the kinds of people that he asked me if he's associated with, and and where he's been around the world and where he hasn't been and anybody that he knows that's been around the world and all that kind of stuff. I started thinking right then and there, there is absolutely no way on God's green earth that our president of the United States of America could have got a security clearance for what they were asking him to be secured for. And and it's the same way with all of these other people. If you're in the Secretary of State's office, should you not have to have a security clearance and go through the same kind of thing they're asking military people? Yeah, well, wait a minute. Stop right there. Let's just, and I've only got two minutes left, and I want you to expand on this. 
take a look at the history of John Kerry, an anti-Vietnam, anti-war, anti-United States citizen at that time, and sat before Congress and denounced the United States, and now he's Secretary of State. Would you please tell me to go figure? Well, it, it, it's just that and everything else, and all those assistants and those Muslim Brotherhood people who are in there, if they are associated with people who are, are on the verge of terrorism, they should not be in those sensitive positions, and that's all there is to it, and nobody has a backbone in Washington to hold them accountable, and it starts right there with Simpson. He should have done it, and hopefully that will be a a question that's asked to him when he's getting reelected. Why would you not stand up against someone who has not been cleared by security for their calling? Absolutely. I wish we had more time. I love having this lady on the air, and we kind of freelance it and just shoot things back and forth. Excellent job, Rita. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, okay? Okay, and just to say, everybody get on the phone and call your senators and your congressmen and tell them to defund Obamacare and fund the government with everything else so that they know that we're watching them real close. Amen. Bye, Deb. God bless you. Rita, thank you so much. Love having that lady on the air. I really do. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. I was, I was sitting here a few minutes ago, and I was going, oh, my goodness, I can't wait for lunchtime. And you know why? Because I'm hungry and starving to death. And now that leads me into what we're going to talk about. Two great locations of Burgers Etc., 700 North Overland in Burley and 124 South Oneida in Rupert, and they've got a September special. Barritos or corn dogs, 99 cents after 3 p.m. You can stop by after school for a snack, and on the weekends, it's fantastic. And on uh, Sundays, they got shrimp dinners. Oh, you're going to love Burgers Etc. at 700 North Overland in Burley and 124 South Oneida in Rupert. Also, let's move along on our great places to go have something to eat. How about Taco Bandito, 2301 Overland in Burley, with the chicken strip salad and the taco salad burrito and the grilled chicken bacon ranch quesadilla. I love bacon ranch. Ooh, it's good. And the macho burritos and the chimichangas and everything else. Oh, my, the people are great. It's a wonderful place. Taco Bandito, 2301 Overland in Burley. And we're going to take a little trip right now, and we're going to run over to Stevo's. Great location. Boy, I'm telling you, you can tell how popular this place is by all the cars parked outside. My goodness, 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Mm-hmm. They've got fresh-cut Idaho French fries, hand-padded hamburger patties made daily with love, and they've got steaks and chicken and seafood and salads and all kinds of great servers and dedicated staff. Oh, my. And as long as the weather holds out, the patio is comfortable and cool and the food is great at Stevo's 290 South 600 West of Hayburn. Last but not least, we have, of course, our friends at the AC Drive-In, 601 East Main in Burley, and they're now serving kids' meals for just $3.50, either a hamburger, cheeseburger, or a four-piece chicken nuggets with fries. Oh, and don't forget, they've got all kinds of milkshakes, all the flavors, everything for you, including the famous Farmer Brown Burger. Oh, yeah, you're going to love it. Great place, 601 East Main in Burley, and that's the AC Drive-In. And those are just a few great places to go if you're hungry and starving to death. I don't even have to ask. I know that this gal, that's, uh, she's, she's just thin enough to take a bath in a shotgun barrel. That's how skinny she is. You're, uh, you're always hungry. I, I, I am starving right now, really I am. Yeah, what did you have for breakfast this morning? A cup of coffee and like a handful of granola. Why Why just a handful? Uh, because that's all I had time to grab. You know, maybe you need a better alarm clock. Maybe you need one that will just reach out and touch your eardrums with something that will get you out of bed a few minutes early so you can enjoy a meal. I need an alarm clock that actually rips me out of bed. You need to the coffee pot. You need a twenty-piece band, is what I you do. need. Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> okay, so my alarm clock goes off. I hit snooze two to three times, and then I finally get up and out of bed, and then I get rolling for the day. But, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm starting. You know what? Uh, we've got this alarm clock that it goes like this, and I'm not exaggerating. Here's how it starts off. Nee-nee. 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 
it keeps getting louder and louder. <laughs> See, my alarm clock starts off really nice and gentle, and then by if I just keep letting it go, oh, it is so loud and obnoxious, I think the neighbors could hear it. I was in a hotel in Denver one time, and whoever had set the radio clock had set it with the volume up to 975 decibels. <laughs> And the alarm went off at 4.30 in the morning, and I had just checked in with a late-night flight getting into Denver at about 1 o'clock in the morning. And basically, I am out like a light, and all of a sudden, this booming voice and music came into my ear. And I mean to tell you, I walk on crutches, but that day, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you walked straight to the door and said, what the heck? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, we're going to take about a six-minute break. Be back in just a moment with more Zeb at the Ranch. Don't go away. You caught me unaware as I got to pull some music. Oh, just that. hum. Go ahead oh. and hum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, thank you very much. Beautiful, beautiful day outside. My goodness. Zeb at the Ranch, I'm Zeb Bell, and of course we thank our major sponsor, your Magic Dolly Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers that include Lee's Furniture Floors and More at 459 Overland and Burley, and lo and behold, we go to the phone lines, and there he is, Mr. Brentley. Good morning, Zeb. How are you? I'm doing great. It's a beautiful morning out. Well, we have been talking all week long about the kid-proof, rhino-proof, and splits-proof smart strand carpet. I'm telling you what, you can't hurt that stuff. You know, we have truly put it to the test. And that's one thing we try to do here at Lee's Furniture is whether we're speaking of floor covering, carpeting, or otherwise, or whether it's in our mattress department, we try to put things to the test and we experience it ourselves so that we can share a true testimony of, of those results. And then we give you that opportunity as well. Uh, in floor cover, you can come in and you can experiment. You can see what we've done. In the mattress department, we give you time to take a test rest. We even give you that 30-day window of making sure that that bed is right for you. But back to that test, amazing what we've done to this smart strand carpet. Of course, uh, Mohawk, they had the, the rhino live on the carpet and uh, do his duty there and then splits. Uh, <laughs> gosh, we've got the posters of splits here showing him uh, in your corral enjoying life and uh, right on that smart strand carpet. And as you know, we brought that carpet in. It was about an 8 by 12 piece. And uh, it cleaned up, but in addition to cleaning it perfectly, it retained its composure and its heat set twist, and uh, there was no blooming out of the yarns. So not only is it stain proof, but it is wear proof, and uh, we've got the proof to show you. Absolutely. Lifetime stain resistance and lifetime anti static, 25 years abrasive wear, 15 years texture retention. If splits can live on that carpet, your kids can live on that carpet. I'll guarantee you that. They can. You can, you can live large, you can enjoy life, and that's what's important, and uh, not have to worry about how your floor covering is going to clean up. And Now, some may think, Zeb, that, oh, gosh, this must really be an expensive carpet. Mm-hmm. But we have, in the Smart Strand series of carpet, we have carpet uh, starting as, as low as $1.44 a square foot, or that's twelve ninety five a square yard, very reasonably priced. And it goes up from there depending on the texture and the density and so forth. But I can tell you that starting price point is just as stain-proof as the most expensive. And so come in, whether it's for your rental home, whether it's for your own family room, living room, come in and we'll show you a great selection of smart strand and other floor covering as well. Absolutely. And, of course, I've always mentioned that when they are looking for a recliner to watch the football games on Saturday and Sunday, you have the biggest selection anywhere. It's that time of year. We do. We I, I think we probably have got 70 to 80 chairs oh my. on the floor right now. And so uh, we can find you the right chair, and we've got them priced so well. Again, if it's a lady's chair, if it's a, a man's chair in leather, in upholstery fabrics, we've got lift chairs. We have power chairs. We have chairs with the consoles where you can put your popcorn and your drink. And so 
get a get a good comfortable seat and enjoy those games. Absolutely, but again, stress the fact they've got to go in and try one on. Not it, it, it's amazing how they all fit differently, and you really got to find one that fits you. They do. That's uh, that's great. Come in and. We'll we'll just let you enjoy. We'll also just let you browse. Come in, feel comfortable, and then uh, if we can help, give direction, a little guidance. Maybe we need to special order in a, a chair with the right fabric or color. We can do that as well. Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen, the man, Mr. Brent Lee at Lee's Furniture Floors and more. And if he went swimming outside yesterday, I bet he tippy toed in and out of the water. It was a little it was chilly a yesterday. Night. It sure was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> God bless you, Brent. Thank you, and we'll send everybody over to. 459 Overland and Burley, Lee's Furniture, Floors, and more. And we'll look forward to seeing them. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Nice, nice people right there at Lee's Furniture, Floors, and more. We've got a whole bunch of things coming up, and I want to remind you, too, about the Chadwick Sports Grill. Oh, man, that is good eating right there. They've got luncheon specials Monday through Friday for just five ninety-five, and they've got senior citizen dinner specials Monday through Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m., only $5. 95 and today the special is lasagna with garlic toast and super salad at the Chadwick Sports Grill. Always nice people, always a great atmosphere, and always great food. At the Chadwick Sports Grill, 139 West Main in Burley. You stop in and see them today. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we have started, and it's really taken off like gangbusters on this program, the interest in what we call school days in Cache County. And it's uh, sponsored by two wonderful businesses, A Child's World at 1308 Overland Avenue in Burley and the Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland Avenue in Burley. And we're going to be talking about them in just a little bit. But with us on the phone this morning, we have the principal at Cache Regional Tech Center, Mr. Mr. Carl Voigt. Carl, how are you doing this morning? Good, thank you. Nice to have you on the air. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what the Cache Regional Tech Center is. I think, and I think I'm safe in saying this, it's a really well-kept seri- a secret, but we're going to let the cat out of the bag. You've got a lot of things to offer over there. We do, we do. We are a uh, high school uh, funded by the Cache County School District. And we offer eight various professional programs. Okay, now tell us about those. Uh, we have an auto tech program, which is a three-year course. Uh, students can start as sophomores and go through all the way to compete in the Ford AAA National Finals. We have AutoCAD, which is a two-year program. We have Automated Manufacturing, which is a three-year program. Uh, We have media graphics where kids learn um, media production, uh, newspaper, radio, uh, things like that. We have information technology. We have health professions, which leads to either a CNA or an EMT certification. We have residential construction, uh, which is a three-year program where they actually get out and build stuff. And then we have our electronics slash robotics where kids learn the in and outs of electronics and we've kind of expanded that starting last year into VEX robotics competitions. Mm. Now, Carl, I'm going to say this, and if you want to correct me, jump right in and tell me I'm wrong. But I think, and I've always said, that a, a cash a regional tech center or a school of this type is absolutely necessary because not all people, when they leave high school, want to go to college. They don't want to spend the money to go to college. They don't want to be at a college, and they want to join the workforce with something they really enjoy doing, and that's why I'm an advocate of this kind of school how would you respond to that well i think you're spot on with that i mean many of our programs offer college credit and and students can leave here with college credit and continue say at at a csi or a cwi in a specific program but additionally we're teaching not just specific skills but we're teaching those work for skills Mm -hmm. you know we were skills usa uh, school which is a program that allow students to work on what some people call those soft skills, but communication and those kinds of work-related skills. And we've had students who have left here right into the workforce. Absolutely. Now, you know, some of these fields are very well-paying fields of endeavor, are they not? 
They are. I mean, some people don't realize that a, a you know a line mechanic at a, a car dealership can make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and while it takes some additional training beyond what we offer, the kids get a great foundation in our program and and can move on. You know, health professions. We have several students who will you know, become CNAs if they want to go to college and be a nurse or, you know, maybe aspire to be a doctor and go to med school, they can work their their profession while they're going to school. Now, Carl, uh, how do people find out more about it? I mean, are you avidly going to uh, various schools or businesses? How do you go about soliciting really good quality students to come to the Cashier Regional Tech Center? Well, the biggest thing is is we, we have to get out to the high schools and, and work with the high school counselors and principals and mm-hmm. get them to, you know, showcase our programs. But more importantly, we need the parents and the community to be involved. Uh, we're working on some, several things. Uh, Debbie Critchfield has set up an employer council meeting with our students and various employers in the area just to give the kids an idea what jobs are out there locally, what's available, what kind of things they're looking for. Uh, We really want to work hard this year on getting our business community involved in our school Mm -hmm. because those are the people who guide us on, you know, what kind of skills do these kids need when they come out of school. Right. Now, there again, right there is an excellent point. What kind of skills do these kids need when they get out of school? And I am an advocate that uh, there's so many kids, and I'll go back to my generation, that they'll go to school because mom and dad want them to get a college and university education. Whether it's at the University of Wisconsin or whether it's Utah State or whether it's Cal Poly, you got to go have it. And not everybody wants to do that. These kids might want to learn some of these great trades and get in the workforce. Let them make their own decision because, boy, there's some excellent availability at your school. There really is. And, you know, I, I personally did construction training when I was in high school and went to college and it wasn't for me. I didn't like it at first. Yeah. It wasn't until I was in my mid-20s that I went back and finished a college degree. But during that time, I was able to work, um, earn a good living, raise a family. And, you know, some kids just aren't ready for that. Maybe they don't want to go to college. Maybe they want to do something else, and maybe they'll go to college later. I think the biggest thing is is having a good foundation of skills and then knowing what the workforce needs. You know, it, can we provide all of it here? Maybe so, maybe not. Can CSI in conjunction with us provide those? I mean, we, ha- we have a phenomenal relationship with the College of Southern Idaho. Okay. Carl, evidently you're covering up some of the phone. Uh, speak directly into that mouthpiece because I'm losing some of it. Give us exactly the numbers, the address, everything about the Cache Regional Tech Center. I want to know everything right now. Okay, the phone number is 878-6610. That's our main office. Give us a call. We're at 1143 West 16th Street. That's just west of the old Burley High School, which is the CSI Center now. And we are here all day during school days. If people want to stop by, stop in. We'll give them a tour, show them what we've got, parents, students, community members, businesses. The doors are open. All right. Well, Carl, thank you so much. Carl Voigt, the principal at Cache Regional Tech Center. Thank you for being on School Days in Cache County. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Very interesting. And some excellent, excellent career opportunities right there at the Cache Regional Tech Center. By the way, we'd like to say thank you to A Child's World at 1308 Overland Avenue in Burley. And uh, you can go online to achildsworldinburley.com and check out all the the Cherokee and Dickey scrubs, all the shoes, all the accessories. Don't forget they've got all the quality games, toys, books, arts and crafts, puzzles, and more. It's a great family store. Check it out today A Child's World, 1308 Overland Avenue in Burley. And we also want to say thank you to our other co-sponsor of Cashew County School Days, and that's Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland Avenue in Burley. For over 14 years, the Ambulatory Surgery Center of Burley has saved area families thousands and thousands of dollars as they've received outstanding medical care, and this is a first-class medical facility. Call them at 677-8888. E 
easy to remember, 677-8888, for doctors who bring their patients to the Ambulatory Surgery Center to give them outstanding care and save them money. Both of those sponsors, we say thank you very much for sponsoring School Days in Cache County. And in a related note, quickly, before I go any further, Debbie Critchfield, I want to say thank you to you over the air. That lady has done so much to help us on this segment. And last week, we were talking to Raft River Elementary Principal Jared Dastrup about a jog thon and uh, we talked about it on the air. And I understand that uh, the money that they derived from that jog thon was over $12,000. So congratulations to Raft River. Great job. Yeah, there you go. Hey, Gina's on the phone with us. Um, Gina, earlier this morning, I got to ask you about this, um, and I want you to think about it, and then we'll come back for an answer after I do a commercial. But there was a statement made on the ABC News when I first signed on this morning that said over in England, men, when they reach the age of 46, they give up trying to make themselves look good. And women wait till age 59 before they let everything go. What are your feelings on that? True. You True. really think it's men retire caring about how they look at age 46 and well, women wait to 59? Um, here's the deal. That, that was a survey done over in Britain. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah. I was reading similar surveys here in America where, yeah, that's pretty much true. By the time that men, most men, not all men, but by the time most men reach the age of 50, they're like, okay, I'm done. Okay. Uh, working out is, is too hard. But women, because, of course, we are in a society that, you know, you have to look young and beautiful, women take that a little bit more seriously. And so, yeah, by the age of 59, we've given up. You just kind of threw in the towel. Yeah. You said, there's no more fish out in the ocean. Nobody's going to take, take a nibble on the hook, and so therefore you just quit. You just quit. But see, I'm still 41 yet, so yeah. I haven't quit yet. But you know, the guys are what really disgusted me, because it's not necessarily for the sex appeal, it's for their health. But they don't... They're looking at the sex appeal and, and the uh, and the output factor. I mean, and by that I mean going out and exercising and eating healthy. And yeah. And they just don't want to do it. Yeah, but you know, I look at it this way: you and I were both in the entertainment business, and uh, when you go out and do a remote broadcast, you're meeting the public. You're a representative of the radio station, as am I. When I go out and announce a rodeo, I am a person that's representing that event, and I have to do a lot of interviews on television and radio and newspaper. And I think, regardless of your age, you should always try to keep yourself up as much as possible. Well, and, and you and I are kind of the exception to the rule because we are out in public and we are doing these kind of things, and so people expect us to look a certain way. Yeah. If you're not dealing with the public on a normal basis, then I can understand their point. So we turn into slobs. <laughs> yeah, we pretty much do. <laughs> okay. We do. I'll take some calls, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. And i got to tell you, too, that if you'd like to start earning thirty to $40,000 a year in as little as four or five weeks, call Lucky Barn at CSI's new Sage Truck Driving School in Burley. Right now, they've got new lower prices for its four-week program. And if you're having trouble with tuition money, don't forget Lucky can explain Sage student loan options. All of this with new classes beginning every week. Call Lucky Born today at 878-5802 at the new CSI Sage Truck Driving School in Burley. 878-5802. Also, um, I forgot to do something here I should have done a long time ago. I forgot to mention to you that uh, Ramsey Heating and Electric can offer rebates on qualified Linux home comfort systems. Yes, they can. Whether it's a gas furnace, an air conditioner, or a heat pump, you and your family will enjoy the comfort. As Linux independent dealer for over 50 some odd years, they know the climate and they know the equipment and they've done the shopping for you. Call 678-0459 and learn how Ramsey Heating and Electric can save you money. Ramsey Heating and electric where they sell warm winters and cool summers what are you going to do this weekend kid well we've got uh you know i know what you're going to do pardon my interruption but okay. you're going to probably put on a dirty old mechanic suit and get underneath a 57 chevy and fix it you know honestly that's what i would truly like to be doing 
but I will be working this weekend. We've got that promotion up in um, Twin Falls that we have to do. And then, of course, the uh, uh, concert that mm-hmm. we've got going on. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I'm going to be doing. Man, I tell you, you just really put in a lot of hours over there. I do. I live here. I work here. I'm married to this place. Yeah, and I noticed that they've got a note on the door that says, this is Gina Jameson's place. That's it. The boss has yes. given it to me. Yes, pretty yeah. much so. Do we have a call? Uh, yeah, we've got Al on the phone for us. Oh, my goodness. We couldn't have a day when we didn't hear from Alan. Good morning. Good morning, and guess what? I give up. The went out when uh, Moby Dick was a minnow. What was that? I say the sex, sex appeal went out on men when Moby Dick was a minnow. If you think for five seconds I'm going to make a response to that, you are dead wrong, my friend. Hey, can I do you do me a favor? You've already committed uh, to where you owe me favors. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, can I tell the people out here at Carefree Estates that their water's back on? Oh. Okay. Is that a good deal? I hope so. Uh, we didn't know there was a problem over there. Well, I, I'm in charge of the water, and when it rains, I had to shut the pump off. So I see. It beats running around telling everybody. So you basically say it again so we can be a public service to everybody. Carefree estates. People, your water's back on. Okay. Well, How's everything else going? Well, we're busier than heck, and I'll tell you something, Al. Uh, we've had some excellent people all week on our program, and in just a few minutes, I think you're going to really enjoy a gentleman that was just on Fox News the other night on Hannity's program, and it's professor of law at George Mason University, Jeremy Rabkin. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. I'll all right. Thanks, buddy. Have a good one. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Well, those finger steaks were good. <laughs> what finger steaks? Rub it in. <laughs> what finger steaks? Wait a minute. Come on, tell me. I had some finger steaks and just sat, tasted real good. You know, you guys are hungry and talking about food and that. Well, whoa, 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 wait a minute. It seems like Gina knew about this before, and she I, said, don't tempt me or something like that. How come she knew crazy. about it before I knew about it? I didn't know about it earlier. Oh. <laughs> Just hey, you know, you're talking it. about people addressing that. You know, uh, I think a lot of the older generation that, they were taught that way. You know, they get up, they, you know, yeah, they dress for the situation, but kudos for a lot of the women and stuff like that. They get up, they get their hair done, they get their makeup done, whatever. They put on some nice clothes and stuff before they even went out the door. Absolutely. Any, any more, you know, people don't care. They don't care what they look like, and I think it's, they don't realize how bad it looks on them to not do that. My wife was one, and when we got married, she'd get up before I did, so she had her hair done, her makeup done before I woke up. Holy smokes. That's great. You know, but you know, you bring up an interesting point, and Gina and I have talked about this on the air many, many times, and I've only got two minutes left here, but um, the other day, and I mentioned this on the air, I was sitting in the pickup waiting for Deanna at a parking lot of a grocery store. I was appalled at how men and women go shopping, and especially the women in those pajama bottoms, and some of them were a little rotund, and uh, let's just say that some of their body was just eating to get out of the confinement, and it looked really <laughs> ugly. <laughs> agreed, agreed. I mean, you know, years ago, when I drove truck in that over the road, uh, you know, a guy had a pair of Levi's on, a nice button-up sh- shirt, something like that. You know, he, you know, he looked decent. Yeah. And that, you know, he was clean, he was decent, and that. Nowadays, you go into a truck shop and see these truck drivers come in there. Number one, they can't slide into the booth because they, there's not enough room. Yeah. But number two, they're all wearing sweats and pajama bottoms. Yeah. Oh, brother. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I think we've got to take some pride in ourselves. And I, I doubt seriously if people see me hardly anywhere without having a nice, clean pair of jeans that are pressed and a sports shirt and a nice sports jacket. And uh, that's just the way I dress every day. Yep, yep, I agree. All right, my friend. I agree. God bless I agree. you, Kilt Man. Thank you.
Thank you. Good guy right there. Hey, real quick, don't forget to drift in. 545 F Street in Rupert. Oh, home-cooked meals on Thursday evening tonight with Chef Dave Haley, starting at 5 p.m. to closing. And it's a meal just like Mom used to make. I'm telling you, this guy can cook. And they've got lunch at 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Saturday with daily specials, banquet facilities, and outdoor dining available. Oh, you're going to love it. The Drift In, 545 F Street in Rupert. You stop over and see them today. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Don't you go away. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Uh, thank you, sir. And welcome into the last half hour of our program for a Thursday. Beautiful day outside. And I'm very honored to have with us on the telephone... The law professor at George Mason University, Professor Jeremy Rabkin. Good morning, sir. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Very nice to have you on the program. I watched you on television the other evening and uh, was listening to your remarks about uh, what's going on with our world affairs, especially over in the Middle East with Syria. And uh, I guess to start things off this morning, sir, where are we? I see nothing but uh, trouble and quicksand over in the Middle East, and I see any future involvement kind of a, uh, a sucking in sound, if you will, into the quicksand that possibly possibly could lead the world towards Armageddon. Where are we as far as this mess in Syria, and is Obama handling this correctly? Well, I think you're too optimistic in your forecast. How so, sir? Uh, Obama is not handling it even as well as your assessment seems to assume. I mean, to be sucked in, you have to be involved, and his involvement seems to be um, making speeches from the sidelines, and he's not even doing much of that, so I, I, don't, I don't have a good sense of where this is going, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't think it's going anywhere well. I mean, to start with, um, Obama has changed the subject to chemical weapons, so now we're all obsessing about chemical weapons. and. Uh, it may sound hard-hearted, but uh, chemical weapons are not a strategic weapon. Uh, it's not obvious that it's so much more terrible to die under a chemical weapon than to die under a falling building or a barrage of bullets. So he's basically said, um, well, we don't really care what happens in Syria, but we really care a lot about getting rid of the chemical weapons. So we're, we're, we're running down that path. But, of course, we're not going to be able to get rid of the chemical weapons. I think that's just a completely fantastical uh, scenario there. Um, the United States took more than 10 years to destroy its own stockpile of chemical weapons, and that's in a, a country at peace, in a very rich country with very good r roads and a lot of equipment. The idea that you're going to be able to do this in Syria in a few months, uh, it's just impossible. Absolutely. So uh, he simultaneously focused us on one narrow little aspect of this and then embraced a plan which can't actually deal with that. So, I, I mean, the, maybe the most optimistic uh, scenario is uh, the whole thing is just, um, just talking points, uh, and he's hoping that within a week we'll be preoccupied with the budget uh, standoff between Republicans and Democrats, and we will forget about Syria, which is possible. I think that's very possible. On the other hand, I think you can just take it as a given that uh, there's going to be a lot more killing in Syria, and there may well be people killed in the next few months with chemical weapons. And it's, it is a bad thing for the United States to have the president um, make a very big public uh, demand that something happen or that something not happen and then just shrug his shoulders and say, no, I was just kidding. Yeah. Professor Rabkin... He has to get back into it in some way. Professor Rabkin, let me ask you this question. Did this all start as a preview as to how this man and this administration would treat us in this country and the world with his apology tours that he had in his first term as president? <laughs> that wasn't a good start. Explain Sorry. what that did. <laughs> I admit that. <laughs> but, you know, mostly, I, just so we're, uh, I mean, not just treating this as a joke, I, I, the reason why I think there is a connection is that um, he 
seems to have this idea that we don't, America does not have enemies. Mm -hmm. Only George Bush had enemies. And once it's made clear to the world that America's under new management, then the people who used to be our enemies will no longer be our enemies and will all live at peace. And that is so childish, that is so pathetically deluded, that you, you, know, you really fear to have someone with that belief in charge of foreign policy. But there he is, in charge of foreign policy. Is it a naivete by this man and his administration, or is it, in your opinion, possibly a predestined plan to remove us as a superpower, to remove us as a respected uh, nation that helps others? What What is it? Is this man that naive that well, he could possibly... I mean, just one thing on the side uh, of the... Uh, there's really a pattern to this... Um, he has a lot of things that he wants to spend money on, so he really begrudges spending money on the military. And when they started the sequester, people said, well, you know, we, we won't really go through this sequester because that would mean uh, chopping bigger bites out of the defense budget. And Obama seemed to be perfectly willing to take bigger bites out of the defense budget. So that does make it a little harder for us to plan interventions around the world. But my sense of this, for what it's worth, maybe not worth much, I have no inside information, but um, he just seems to be not really interested in foreign affairs. Mm -hmm. He likes to give a speech where there's a big crowd. He no longer gets big crowds overseas, so he's not that interested. Is this a position now that we've been put in on the world stage to where there's been an elevation of Putin as now people are looking to him as possibly the world leader and Russia? Is this a position that we can never change and regain our respected superpower status? Of course we can um, change it, and of course we can regain our position as a superpower because... You know, we're like three times richer than Russia, and we even now have much more military assets. We have 10 aircraft carriers. I don't think he has one. I mean, this is all kind of embarrassing, and it looks bad, and it undermines people's confidence in the United States, but this is not how you lose your status as a superpower, that you make a series of blunders and embarrass yourself. Mm hmm would you say that you were relatively surprised by Bob Gates and Leon Panetta in an interview that we saw yesterday being broadcast where Panetta was very adamant and said that if we draw a line in the sand and it's crossed, we damn sure better honor it. I was surprised that he was that vocal about it. Well, you're asking me about the politics of former defense secretaries, really, right? Mm -hmm. Do you criticize your former boss? And I would say the important thing about both Panetta and Gates is they're at a point where they probably do not even dream secretly of having another job. Mm -hmm. I think they're both in their 70s now. Mm -hmm. And they probably think, um, I did enough in Washington, and now I'm just going to tell the truth. But I think someone who was even 10 years younger would have been somewhat more diplomatic in the way that they phrased it. But... I think they are saying what they genuinely believe, which is this really looks bad when the president does this. Let me ask you this, Dr. Rabkin, and with your vast knowledge on Middle Eastern affairs and what's going on in a tumultuous situation, we hear so much about Syria, Iran, we hear so much about Russia, but, you know, I'm worried about our number one ally over in that area, our only ally, basically, Israel. We don't hear too much of what the correspondence is with Obama, our administration, and them for their safety and security. How concerned are you that they're kind of being left out on the back porch? Well, I don't think they want to be in the middle of America's Syria policy. They, they seem to have calculated, which is very reasonable, that it's not going to be helpful to anybody in Syria for them to say, these are our friends, because then everyone else will say, ah, these people are just being tools of Israel. So they're, they're, they're staying on the sidelines. And I, I have talked to um, Israeli officials about this. Um, they're very hesitant even privately to pick a side because they think they're really terrible people on all sides there. Mm -hmm. and they're, they're not sure that um, if Assad goes down, he would be replaced by somebody who would be a better neighbor. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, they're very cautious, and it's too bad that Obama 
I mean, it's good that Obama is being cautious, I think. He should be cautious. I think it would be a terrible idea for the United States to be caught up in the middle of that civil war. But you should pay attention. And he does seem to begrudge more than, you know, an hour or two a month. Let me also back... More attention than that. Let me also back up and ask you about uh, some things that never go away, and one of those is Benghazi. A lot of people on the left are going to say that it's a liberal, uh, a conservative ploy to hurt and damage the Obama administration, that all the answers have been given, but then we always hear something new coming out of Benghazi, and why those four people died without having any support or any action to aid them and possibly save their lives. How big is yeah. Benghazi? Well, I agree with just with what you said, that it's very disturbing that new things keep coming out. And I, I do not have any inside information. I do not... I, I mean, I find it amazing that... Uh, whatever mistakes they made, I think they acknowledge in a general way that they made some mistakes. They are determined to, to keep information so secret about this because the odds are the things will come out. I guess their calculation is that um, if you can keep things from coming out long enough, people lose interest. But I, I don't think they can keep things from coming out for, for the rest of Obama's term. So mm -hmm. I think we will hear a little additional revelations about this and about that, right? And the latest ones seem to be, first, that they really have had a very orchestrated campaign to prevent people from testifying, to prevent people from being available even to talk to journalists. And that's just such a red flag. It just seems so suspicious. And the second thing that has come out is more indications that um, there were... Uh, uh, there were uh, troops there who could have intervened, mm -hmm. and they were told not to. Uh, it seems to me they would be much better off to explain why the White House made the decision that they didn't want to have troops intervening. Dr. Rabkin, one of my concerns is the under-the-table politics that's going on in regards to Benghazi and also Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State yeah. at that time. And it seems like this cover-up and this nonchalant attitude of what difference does it make now, uh, this could come back to haunt her, and it should, if she makes a bid for the presidency. What are your thoughts? I agree with that. I think people will repeat that over and over and over and over and over. And they should. That was a really disgraceful thing to say for a Secretary of State. Is there anything looming on the horizon right now on the conservative side of things? Uh, anybody that comes to the forefront, is it Marco Rubio, is it Ted Cruz, is it somebody that can right the ship and hopefully in 2016 we can start to look for an America that is respected, is a superpower, and is going to honor the Constitution? I'm really concerned right now with this administration we have now. Of course. I, I, I'm not I'm offering you a candidate. Um, it's way, way too early, and I don't know the various contenders, but I do think Republicans have one undeniable advantage, which is uh, the media will ask them a lot of hard questions, and they'll have to do their homework, and they'll have to be on their toes. And so if a Republican does get to the White House, the guy will understand that um, life is full of hard choices and you better have a good explanation of, for the choice that you've made. One of the things that I think really was a very, very great disservice to Obama was that the media just fawned on him. They just celebrated him, whatever he said, and I think he really started to believe that he just had magical powers. And he would do the, what you call the apology tour. He would go around the world and say, America's totally changed because I am here, and that, that would have a tremendous effect. I think he's just not used to facing hard choices and having to explain himself. And that's not an advantage for a president, because in the end, you do have to make hard choices. He's still refusing to make a choice in Libya, but the circumstances are catching up to him, and he's, he really looks like a fumbler. And he looks all the more like a fumbler because he's so unused to explaining himself. And however you choose, you really do have to explain. So the Republicans will have this advantage of they'll know that in the 
real world, you really have to think hard and then defend your choice. Dr. Rabkin, following up on that point you just made about Obama uh, being a fumbler and not really having anybody else to help him, why can't someone in his party, in his administration, realize that he can't always have his way, he can't always do things his way, and he needs to be taken off in the cloakroom someplace and say, now look, Mr. President, this is not going to look good or bode good for our party or our country, and make him understand that he's got to listen to other people on various subjects. I, I don't think anyone can do that. I mean, you just look at how he's conducted himself. Um, Chuck Hagel is not a person who had much stature to begin with, and by the end of the confirmation hearings, he just looked kind of silly. So he can't stare down the president. Kerry had somewhat more uh, authority. I mean, he was chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee. He's had a lot of experience in foreign affairs. And the president has just treated him as, you know, a clown who's out there making speeches, and the president doesn't have to pay attention to them. So I don't think either of them can really say to the president, now, come on now. Uh, who does he have in the White House? We don't even know their names. They're, they are pretty um, low-level people, I mean, in the sense of their life experience. Um, when uh, Clinton got in trouble, he brought in Leon Panetta. Leon Panetta had been a congressman. Leon Panetta had served in the executive. Leon Panetta had a lot of experience and was older than Clinton and could look him in the eye and say, Mr. President, don't do this. It's going to really get you in trouble. Obama has no one like that around him, and I don't think that's by accident. He doesn't want someone to look him in the eye and tell him, no, wait, you can't do this. At one time, he's off on his own. At one time, I would have disputed that statement in thinking, after the books I've read and the people I've studied, that perhaps Valerie Jarrett was a person that was basically of control of his personality. But I, I, I agree with you now. Maybe she doesn't have the influence that a lot of people thought she did. Well, well, look, even if you say, oh, no, Valerie Jarrett has a lot of influence, okay, who's she? What's her foreign policy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not sneering at her, but, I mean, this is a lady who, like, has been involved in a lot of business dealings in Chicago. Like, great. That's, that's terrific background <laughs> for figuring out what to do in Syria. Well, I certainly want to say thank you to you for taking the time out of a busy schedule and coming on our program, and I certainly hope I can make inroads to have you back. Jeremy Rabkin, Professor of Law at George Mason University School of Law, thank you, sir. God's blessings to you, and I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, sir. Very interesting okay. gentleman, and I caught him on television not too long ago, and I said, I've got to have him on my show, and uh, has appeared in major law reviews and political science journals, and has written books, Law Without Nations, and uh, he's on the board of directors of the United States Institute of Peace, and uh, we'll have him back, Professor Jeremy Rabkin. Oh, my goodness, time for a weather update with Michael Rogers Weather, brought to you by Lennox Home Comfort Systems, gas uh, furnaces, air conditioners, and heat pumps all through Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Here now is Michael Rogers. Hi, everybody. Michael Rogers from MichaelRogersWeather.com. Fall in South Central Idaho could not get any better than what we have in store for the weekend. Sunday today, 71 for the high. 45 is the overnight low, and it's going to continue through tomorrow and Saturday. Slight chance of a thunderstorm on Saturday. But this is a really good time of year to be in this location in the Great Basin and the Mountain West because it's not cold, it's not hot, and the leaves changing are pretty. Have a great day. Enjoy the weather. Feel the weather you got. Thank you very much, Michael. And, of course, Lennox. Home comfort systems, gas furnaces, air conditioners, and heat pumps. All through our friends, Keith Ramsey and the rest of the crew at Ramsey Heating and Electric, 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. You give them a call today, 678-0459. Oh, man, I have enjoyed this week. It's been a great week, and we've got a lot of things cooking for next week on the program. And tentatively, I will tell you this, and I know I've got some listeners that are very, very interested in this lady. Um, we have made overtures to have back on the air Monday, we hope, at 1030, uh, from Atlanta, Georgia, Dr. Elena George. And she is one of the foremost authorities and knowledgeable people about Obamacare and just how bad Obamacare is going to get.
and uh, we're working on getting her scheduled for Monday at 1030. Don't miss that if possible. I uh, want to remind you, too, great big tire sale going on. Where is the big tire sale? Well, at our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Oh, my goodness sakes. They've got the passenger car tire, the Ultra Z900, on sale, starting at just one hundred nine sixty seven, And they've got the Wildcat AT2 for your light truck and SUVs on sale, starting at just one seventeen fifteen. They've got on sale custom wheels, and they've got all the shocks and struts and the front end alignments and the batteries and the best, the best in brake service. Where? Well, I'll tell you, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Lane and Rupert, John on Pole Line and Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland and Burley, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Got time for a call or two? Give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Gina, uh, that was an interesting gentleman, Dr. Rapkin. He was very interesting, and I really uh, was enthralled by what he had to say. Well, you know, he uh, had kind of a laid-back approach to what Obama really is and what Obama really isn't. And you know what's coming out about this president, more so in the last couple of months than ever before, is that he will not listen to anybody. He will not take advice. He will not take any leadership changes. He's floating the boat on his own. And I don't know about you, but that's really scary to me. Well, I'm I'm not impressed, and it is really scary. He needs to be listening to those people who have, a, you know, a vast amount of experience experience in you know different areas where he does not. He doesn't. He doesn't have any experience at all. Yeah, you know, the right there, you've summed up this man. He was a state, uh, I should say, a U.S. senator from the state of Illinois and had a very poor voting record, had very minimal experience on anything to do with international or world, world affairs, and this guy right now is carrying the suitcase with the red button in it, and he is absolutely shirking his responsibility of listening to anybody else in his cabinet, yep. and he's got this arrogancy that I have not seen. I honestly have not seen this arrogancy in any other president during my lifetime. The look in his eyes, which look into his soul, the attitude, the conveyance that I'm going to do it my way, and if you don't like it, that's tough. I have never seen that before. Well, what really irks me the most is, is he's not listening to the American public. Absolutely. Period. Absolutely. We have a call. Good morning, caller. I got three minutes. Go ahead, quickly. Okay. Uh, I had a son-in-law call me yesterday. He said, uh, I got a flyer here. He said, he, uh, it says Mike Simpson is conservative. I said, uh, well, I want you to save it for me. And he said, I threw it in the trash up at the post office. <laughs> and I said, well, dig it out. Because <laughs> I said, it's a lie. <laughs> he isn't conservative. So he did. He dug it out. And, uh, of course, it's a, one of them flyers, and, of course, I'm not, uh, I'm not on his mailing list anymore. I don't know whether you are or not. Uh, let's but, just, I, I don't uh, think, I don't think that you and I are going to get a Christmas card. No, <laughs> but anyway, it, uh, it, said, it says down here, I the whole type proven, proven conservative, <laughs> and, uh, that's as big a lie as I ever heard of. <laughs> 2012 and 30% conservative? No, I don't believe so. Well, Fred, I appreciate your call. You made me giggle a little bit. I needed a laugh at the end of the program. Uh, what's that guy's name? Rodney. I think he was trying to big that to the forefront earlier this, uh, this segment, but uh, he didn't. But anyway... Uh, my son-in-law, he he was getting kick out of it, so he uh, he got one of these flyers, and and he uh, he 
he lost his, but he got another guy's from Deck. Oh, right. He pulled it out and brought it out to me. All right, well. It was in the trash, too. Okay, well, God bless you, Fred. i got to run to the news, but thank you, and have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you again on Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, there's going to be a lot more uh, political debate and haranguing about various candidates, Mike Simpson being one of them, and uh, we're going to carry it all for you right here on this program. I want to say thank you to all of our advertisers, all of our main sponsors. I want to say thanks to Gina, as always. She does a wonderful job. Thanks to my lovely wife, Deanne, and thanks to you, the listener. Without you, we just wouldn't bother or waste the time trying to put forth the effort. You are special. Thank you very much. We're going to be back here again next Monday at 8.06 with Zeb at the Ranch. And remember, the way things were are the way things ought to be. God bless.